Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second week of the Founders Invitational. Today, we have a very unique crew battle format. Each team will have five players and work their way through five best of threes. Each individual match will earn their team two points toward their team score, and each player earns an additional one point for each stock remaining when they win. At the end of the match, the team with the most points will win. Our teams tonight will be RIT playing against Marist College, St. Peter's University and Siena College, and closing us will be Niagara University versus Kinesis College. My name is Matthew Toxic Gerbil Merrick, and for the series, I will be joined by Kevin Navik Dignan. Yeah, hi everyone, and uh, slight correction there on the script, RIT and Maris will not be playing tonight due, some, due to some technical difficulties, but hopefully we will see them playing next week. And right. I'm looking forward to today's game, Gerbil. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Oh. Uh, we gotta remake the arena real quick. Yeah, that was that was unfortunate timing. That was but bad. yeah, we were literally about to start. Give me one I, second. I am excited. I'm excited to see Sienna play. I'm excited to see St. Peter's play. Right. Mm -hmm. The standings uh, overall is they are our top two seeds at the moment. Uh, we have St. Peter's being first and Sienna being second. Rounds one being a differential. Um, St. Peter's having one more win. Uh, in individual rounds over Siena College. But, uh, so it, it's going to be interesting because this could seriously affect the standings coming into week three. And also we could see Niagara and uh, Canisius going in the uh, the Battle of the Bridges, which should mm -hmm. be fun. Uh, obviously there's yeah. a bit of, bit more bit more competitive rivalry there. Yeah, yeah a little inter-college rivalry is always very fun to look at. Yeah. And the so Williams. they're definitely going to be trying extra hard to uh to prove which bridge is better. <laughs> the which yep, the better bridge. Yeah. And no, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, player wise, I am just very quickly trying to find out playing this week in what order. Mhm. Mm yeah, I'm uh looking into that. To you right now, trying to find out. Uh, but yeah, while we, we wait, uh, did we see either of these two teams play last week? Uh, we saw both these teams play last week. They both won their yeah. games. Um, oh, okay. Siena College beat Marist College with a total of five points. It went to round five. And oh, yeah. St. Peter's beat Niagara University uh, in... Yeah. A four to one. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we did see both these teams play, and they both won their sets. Great, so they're matched up against each other. Cool. All right, and the other one is Niagara and Kinesis. We did not see Kinesis, but we did see Niagara last week. All right, and it looks like we're getting into it. Um... Yeah, and these first players we will be having as soon as my uh, we have. So Siena College's Jason versus St. Peter College's uh, Lil Taze, I believe. Uh, yeah, and we, we saw Lil Taze play really well. Uh, I believe they came in second last week, right? And they were up against uh, Mr. Patinator. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe Lil Taze won both games with a single stock left. He did, so they were close. He definitely had the advantage. He won both. Uh, uh, in this game, he does start out at the disadvantage, though, against Jason, uh, Young Link. Jason also winning both of his games last week. I don't remember if he played Young Link, though, but he might have. Um, no, uh, I, think, I, guess I th think he played Breath of the Wild Link. Oh, yeah, yeah I think he might have, yeah. Because he had some bomb tech, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he did. All right, well, he's switching it up. Interestingly enough, um, maybe he studied, maybe he watched some VODs and he expected a matchup. Maybe he's just feeling like this is a Young Link kind of week. Either way, it's definitely a Young Link kind of week so far as he almost zero to deaths. Uh, Lil Tay's there, only taking 16%. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 a great state to be in and a good oh, some good combos coming out at the moment. It's interesting, right? Because a link, all three links, obviously, people know play very, very similarly, but there's slight differences that you can kind of, it does, the skills overall do cross pollinate, but there's the little niche bits where you have to individually learn them. And it's always fun seeing a link player understanding or having a good depth of all three of them. 
Oh yeah, and we've seen uh, Jason's pressure here be really good. A solid mix of projectiles and spaced aerials. We've seen him go in with a lot of backers and forwards, just like that, catching bad landings as uh, Little Taze's K roll tries to find his way in. And already he took 20% on that second stock, looking set up for a really solid three stock to start his team off with a huge lead. Yeah, I'm really liking the aggressive play coming out from Jason at the moment, right? He's hitting his combos, he's getting the setups that he's looking for, his bomb's tining, like the patience there is really, really good as well. Drops it, stops the recovery there, is gonna manage to get the ledge hit. Good follow-up, the forwarder was good, looking for these bombs just to build up this damage to get his opposition in that kill percentage. Obviously at 137, he's already there, but you always want to build it up because it just becomes easier to deal that knockout blow. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that knockout blow, 157% on Lil Taze, very close to kill percent. He's just sort of been at the ledge being edge guarded for this entire stock, just now getting center stage control back. Let's see if he's able to take the stock and stop one more point from being earned, or if it will be a three stock for Jason, and I think that'll do it. Yeah, it's a really looking like that. solid three stock. Yeah, that that is a nice clean three stock coming out from Jason from Siena College there. And mm -hmm. that's only the first round, because these are, of course, played in best of threes. Yep, so... that's three points for Siena College earned by Jason. And if he gets another three stock, he'll not only earn another three points, and Siena College could potentially start out eight to zero. Yeah, and I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a good point advantage, right? Three stock in your opposition immediately. Mm -hmm. is yeah, last week... Really nice. Both team, yeah, last week, both teams that lost had 10 points. So if you get eight points after the first round, you're potentially already there with a win. Yeah, but you also, all it takes is the opposition does it the next game and gets eight points. Oh yeah, no, it's completely comebackable, but just I thought that was a little bit of an interesting stat we have so far. It's a low yeah. sample size for sure, but definitely yeah. interesting. No, I, there's there was a lot we learned from last, like from last week overall. Because the point, I believe the largest point differential was 12 points when it came to the St. Peter's University versus uh, Niagara University. Mm -hmm. And even then they dropped a game. The very first game, it was looking really good for Niagara with DLS against um, Alderio. Yeah. And DLS took it three stocks the first game, one stock the second game, and managed to score a six-point lead straight off the bat. Uh, but then but, St. Peter's University kind of swept through the last of it and yes. had a really good win. Yeah, well, they managed to get the next four games in, which yeah. obviously won them the set. But even then, when they lost four games, they still managed to net another four points. Yeah. So it's... it's got two stocks. Yeah, so you can kind of gain points here and there, even if you don't win the, like, the set. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting one. And yeah, looking over the Siena College and Maris game... That was a very close game with a 15-point difference, and that really only came down to the end. Oh, yeah, no, the Siena versus Maris, literally, that was gate, the last game decided it. it yeah, was it was as close as we could have asked for. Mike against Muller. Mm -hmm. It was it an was incredibly but, uh, close game. Yeah, and back to this match, we have the K-Rule versus Link matchup. Really rough for K-Rule, I'm pretty sure. It is hard for him to get in past all those projectiles. Uh, I might just want to see a character switch from Lil Taze, but I don't know if he has another character ready to bring out. Uh, and if he does, I'd like to see some more patient gameplay. K Rule has a reflector. It's a risky option. It's very punishable. But in a matchup like that, you kind of have to go for it and get some value out of bouncing those projectiles back because you're so fat. It's going to be really hard to weave around them well. Yeah, I do. I do think this matchup is slightly young link favor but i feel like if k Rule gets in and starts to be able to pull off k Rule things mm -hmm. he can kill at a very low percentage because young link's so light yeah i'd say it's pretty heavily favored for the young link player i just don't think k Rule's like that good of a play of a character but in the magic of wi-fi anything is possible that is unbelievably <laughs> true i'm gonna be honest uh -huh. with you K rule jumps up like four tiers when you're on Wi-Fi. It's him and DDD are the kings. It's unreal. But we yeah. do see a long time waiting here. I think it's just because they were deciding what stage to go to next. But oh. uh, it is Lil Tay's not joining. He may be debating a character switch right now. Yeah, 
And it looks like we're going to Smashville. Mm -hmm. So I think we didn't see Smashville at all last week or two weeks ago. I think it, yeah, I think, I think it did get, I think Smashville did get banned every single game last week. Yeah, banned or not, not gone to at the very least. I think there was literally zero Smashville games, which is a shame. I think that central platform adds a really interesting dynamic that no other stage has. Yeah. Uh, it's it's definitely one of those stages that again, and I think I think this goes for a lot of stages overall anyway, mm -hmm. is some characters become unbelievably good on it. And it's because Smashville is very unique in that way. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts about Smash actually, is that like the map you go to matters. Like you look at any other 2D fighter, and the map is ju it's just cosmetic. It doesn't matter at all. Well, and in more Smash, combat. Mortal Kombat, like, it matters a little. Like, there's, like, some, like, hazards. That's it matters tech. in Tekken, I think. We do see, it Tekken does matter. It matters very much so in Tekken, but that's a whole different mm -hmm. co topic conversation. Yeah. But yes, it very much so does. But we see a character switch off of King K. Rule to Yoshi. Mm -hmm. I love Yoshi's Taze. pick, though. Yoshi has very similar problems getting around projectiles and swords that uh, King K. Rule does. Yoshi does a lot better just because he's so much more mobile. But Yoshi doesn't have those like disjointed hitbox to really like beat out projectiles and swords and clank with things. So it makes it rough to get in, but it's definitely easier than when you're playing King. That is yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. And I think this matchup is, is a lot more evenly uh, evenly matched mm -hmm. in general. Yoshi has some really good shenanigans on Smashville as well, so I wonder if that's specifically why we did see Little Taze pick this as his map and then include the character switch. Yeah, probably. Yoshi's a really interesting character. He has the air mobility to really contest Young Link in the air, which is something that Cable can't do. So uh, if Jason starts jumping around and getting a little bit too happy with that, it's really easy to just space an aerial and put it exactly where it has to be to punish him for it. And already we see it happening. Um, Jason already at a higher percent than he was in Game 1. The yeah, end. the entirety of game one. And I really, really like what we're seeing out here from Little Taze, right? The spacing's really, really nice. Not too sure about that, but he is going to be able to recover. Yoshi, like you said, has some of the best air mobility in the entire game, right? Being able to keep that horizontal movement with the egg toss is really, really handy, especially if you get knocked upwards on the stage. And mm -hmm. as long as he keeps spacing out here, good reads, good jumps, and then punishing it, and a great up tilt. Up smash. Oh, that was just smash, wasn't it? Yeah. It's it's yeah. been a hot second. Uh, Lil Taze getting first blood after not taking a single stock game one. You have to imagine he feels really good about that one. Uh, yeah, and then a good retort, but already we did see Little Taze get 50%. So Yoshi deals so much damage. Yoshi does deal a lot of damage. You wouldn't think it, but he is a bit of a gremlin, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, no, I saw I saw Lil Taze hit him twice, and you're like, oh yeah, 50% extra credit. I'm like, there's no way. There's no I way, 50%? Yeah, it happened. We do see <laughs> we do see Jason, though, answering back here. Starting to be able to get a bit more spacing, but Lil Taze is not giving him that much movement. I'd like to see more grabs into these shields. I was actually about to say that. I like, don't think we've seen uh, Lil Taze grab once in either of these games. No, we definitely Yoshi's does. Grab, definitely not great. It's not a good grab, and he doesn't have good follow-ups out of it. But it's sort of that thing where you have to go for the bad option just to make your opponent respect that it could happen. You know? Yeah. Well, you, you've got to you've got to make your opposition fear the option select. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if they know that you're willing to go for a grab, then they need to second guess it. That was a that really, was really nice really back air, though. Super yeah. good Ooh. punish. And the follow-up with the forward air there is going to find the stock. This is a completely different game. Yeah, we'll take. Oh my, that's a peanut shield. Lil Tate going deep for that forward air is going to mean he has the stock advantage again. Looking solid to be able to take this game so far. Yeah. Keeping the lead both stocks. All we need to see is, yeah, one mm -hmm. forward yeah. smash is all it's going to take. I was going to say a dash attack probably also would have found it. Yeah, probably. But Lil Tay is with the, with the percent mooch lead, with the momentum right now, looking poised to start racking up damage and possibly take game two here. Keep the set close. These raw smashes coming out from Little Taze are so risky, but he, he just keeps getting the punish. Yeah, he really does. Uh, 
I don't know if it's read, if it's Wi-Fi, but Yoshi's smashes are not very punishable. So he is a character where if you want to throw out those random smashes, it's definitely not the worst option because sometimes they really do just hit like we're seeing. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say I'd say more than sometimes. We're seeing them hit a lot here. Oh and the my God, priority at the moment is really, really working out for him in these moves. Oh, a good parry coming out. That's so unfortunate. Oh, oh my God, he flipped him? He did. That was the, I'm trying to run away DI. That was the, I'm holding straight to the left DI. Oh my God. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to believe, but it just ain't working. Like, he tried to DI that. That and... was such a randy down smash. And it caught me off guard, and it definitely caught Jason off guard. He went flying into the blast zone. And that will be Lil Taze taking game two. Two stock, one stock remaining. One stock, one stock. So it's three to one. So if Lil Taze can mm -hmm. bring this back, even with a one stock, they'll have a two point. Or no, they'll have a one point net one total point, because yeah. it would put them up to four points. Mm -hmm. uh, so for anybody that's not 100% familiar with the format, I will quickly run over it again. Um, every stock, we are playing effectively a crew battle with a bit more added on to try and make every single match count and be valid for the, uh, for the game, you know, because... There's nothing worse, especially in crew battles, Gerbil, you might agree with me, where you get sat on the bench and your game just doesn't matter because your team is doing fantastic. It's a great feeling, but it's kind of a bittersweet moment. But the point of the match and the tournament rules at the moment is every single stock matters. So a stock at the end of a round is a point. Both of these players are paying best of three, and whoever wins the best of three gets another two points. So that's the equivalent of two stocks. We'll go through this for each player in their team. So that's five best of threes. And by the end of it, when all of the points are totaled up, that will be the winning school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good summary of the format. Um, so far, we've only had two game sample size, but both times the team that has won more sets has been the team that also won in points which is to be expected, but there are definitely cases where if one player has a really carry match and then the rest of their team drops some sets, it is actually possible for the team winning less sets to have the overall point victory if they have more decisive wins in their individual matches, in yes. their individual games. They also need those losses to still probably take a round. Since you, you kind of need those two points from a <laughs> taking it to a third set, you kind of need a two stock to nullify the two points you get from winning. So yeah. you, you can't just lose, lose. But we are going to Town and City with no character switches. We are going to see Yoshi versus Young Link, which I think surprises absolutely nobody that we don't see the Yoshi switch after how well oh, yeah. that just Will played out. Switched off Yoshi, he's crazy. Yeah. It worked so much better last time. Uh, this is definitely the way better pick for the matchup for him. And so, not to say that last game wasn't close, but it was just such a stark difference from game one. Yeah. As uh, both players not wanting to be the one to go in first. I mean, I think both players uh, definitely want to try and get this first hit here. And a really good read coming out from John, or uh, from Jason, sorry, as a jab comes out. Managed to clear it up again. They've, they've traded fairly evenly. The back air looking to make something happen a little taste, but it does get punished. The back and forth at the moment, it's one hit, then the other. Okay, they're both at, they're both forward air through each other. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a Dragon Ball Z moment, you know, just swinging through the opponent. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It happens sometimes. Oh, that was almost the up smash of the set. It, that was it almost. almost so good. Uh, you know what? Jason said not today. I am going to punish that as we... Oh, okay. Lil Tay's going in a little bit at the moment, trying to get that percentile a bit more evened out at the moment. The lead is in at Jason's hand. Really, really good bomb there. Worked out for him. And again, another one. He's just hitting these consistently. Yeah, a really solid lead for Jason here. Up 60%. Puts Yoshi solidly in kill percent as he's going to have to get edge guarded here. Or maybe not because he's Yoshi and he just takes center stage from the blast zone. That, that's Yoshi though, and then he's going that's to punish rough. him with that up smash, finding the first dog. 179, he is in rage as well now, so if he just... Um, oh. Wow! 
<laughs> okay, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Okay. What a, what a Chad down air. I cannot believe he went through that. You know who believed in it though? Lil Tays believed in it and it he worked out for him. He got 15% out of that and he said, you know what? I'll take the 15%. Yeah, he's like 50%, but I'll also take 55% after. So uh, still in the disadvantage as these two second stocks start up. But it is still a really close game so far. And he was able to take the first stock from behind last time. Yeah, Jason making use of that platform, getting a bit of a forward air laddered combo. I think that's netted him about 36%. It's a lot of percent. Everything yeah. in this game hits so hard. Uh, but a really solid lead building, 40%. That's about the lead that Jason had when he died in the first stock. So, ooh. But that Down air coming oh. out there, punishing uh, Lil Taze there, trying to throw the egg. Didn't work out for him. And oh, oh my goodness, you... Wow, into the up smash. I mean, it, it's always a bit dicey when you get that low and you're still an egg. Oh yeah, it's dicey, but Link has enough vertical recovery. He makes it back just fine. Yeah. Uh, but 122, barely taking any extra credit. Only 20... Mm -hmm, I shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you say Caster's Curse. A lot of extra credit now. <laughs> Caster's Curse is definitely a thing. As we see some good damage. Oh, the spike coming out. If only, if only they weren't on the platform. Yeah, oh man, that would have been a disgusting spike, but a really, really solid percent lead build being built up. Huge extra credit for Jason here. Even if Lil Taze gets the stock, it's going to be so hard, and that forward air, not going to kill, but the next one might start looking like it will. Yeah, that was, so... a, that was a good DI coming out from Lil Taze. And you say, like, if even if he doesn't set the stock, it's still a point overall, oh, right? Oh, no. are we having a... I think there's a disconnect here. I, uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely looking like that. Thank you, uh, Base Kek Nintendo. No contest. As we will very, very quickly be cutting to a quick break as we get this resolved.
Hello and welcome back, everybody. We're sorry about that little break for uh, technical difficulties, but we've sorted out the ruling has been we have decided to award Sena Siena College's Jason the victory for the game that was disconnected from. He had two stocks and St. Peter University's Lil Tays had one stock left. So we have decided to give Siena two points for their two stocks and St. Peter's one point for their one stock remaining. And Siena College walks away with the match victory overall. Yeah, and now getting into the second set of today, we do have Aiden from Siena College on Me Swordfighter playing against St. Peter University's Chagas on Lucas. Mm -hmm. uh, Me Swordfighter, a character we've been seeing a lot of that I really wasn't expecting. We've been seeing them in the high school matches a bit, and we saw him last week too. Um, a really powerful character with the uh, side B to up B kill confirm. Actually, I think it's neutral B to up B kill confirm. The tornado, I'm pretty sure it's neutral. It's not mm. that bad thing. It's, a, it's an incredibly powerful confirm. Either way, it kills very early. It's very easy to set up into. It is a really lenient timing window. And it's brought a lot of attention to how strong this character can be. Yeah, and I mean, it's one of those weird things where... We can't tell you the exact matchup chance, right? Because Meet Swordfighter uh, has a variety of moves and set and setups, and I just don't have the matchup knowledge against like Lucas and Meet Swordfighter. It's a weird matchup, but at the moment we are seeing the lead being pulled away towards Meet Swordfighter's favor here. Yeah, Gene dying very early there. Probably trying to DI away from the combo, not thinking he would die, but he just goes straight into the blast zone there, unfortunately. Yeah, Aiden doing a really good job here. We are seeing Gene getting some good punish. Oh, okay. The neutral. See, Lucas is one of that was a good oh, okay, getting him into the threat grab. Going for the PK free release a little bit too early here. I I really, really like Lucas's edge guard. Lucas's yeah, Lucas's edge guard is really cool. Um He definitely doesn't have like the best light. Oh, oh, oh. You know what though? <laughs> what the man nice. has projectiles. Oh my god, what a call out. He saw, he, he came, and died. he conquered. I mean, that, that worked out for him really, really well. Really yeah, like what we're seeing took any extra credit too. out of Gene. A lot of good throws there, getting some good hits. Now, evened it out. I mean, he's going, Lucas has got a really good grab, right? And I think that's underestimated because it is a uh, disjointed hitbox grab. As Is he going to be able to get it? He is. Okay, good. Into the Nado, though. Okay, neutral air coming out. Good pressure coming out. There's a 30%. Okay, well, as soon as I said that, he does reduce. PK Ike's definitely not the move for the matchup, I don't think. It's too slow. Probably not, yeah. It's a very slow, very punishable move. If you're at, like, that really far space, and you can apply a lot of scary pressure, but when you're mid-range like that, it's probably a miss in. Like, you don't want to be throwing this out there. Have we seen if Aiden has used the counter or the shine on his down B? I don't think we have. Oh. That was a cheeky reflect with the forward smash, though. From Lucas. Yeah, okay, the PK fight coming out, getting hit by the tornado as he tried to recover, though. 25%, it's really anybody's game, right? They both can kill at this percentage. A grab from Lucas will 100% find that stock. Or... <laughs> or a down smash, catching him holding onto that ledge for a couple of frames too long. Yeah, I mean, and sometimes you just have to call your opponent out like that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you have now, to know they're scared and they're just going to hold on. Gene has the stock lead for the first time this set. He does, but it might get even up here. Edge guard situation. Yeah, he's just going to try. Okay, and he does oh, go for the no. commit there. The PK, and that's going to be the SD. Oh, no. Unfortunate. An incredibly unfortunate SD for Aiden. It means that it will be a two stock for Gene game one. Yeah, Taking I mean, the score up to 7-4 to four now, overall. It's interesting, right? Because I'm not sure what Aiden was going for there. Because if he had committed to that, found the stock, he still mm -hmm. wouldn't have been able to recover, right? Because he well, couldn't he not... Fall. He accidentally fast fell. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> That's that so unfortunate. He fast fall. He probably kills because if he doesn't fast fall, Gene probably stays inside the forward air and he'll be able to double jump and make it back. So that's just really unfortunate by Aiden, but it's one of those things that you sort of have to accept. It happens sometimes. You make big technical errors, but you kind of just have to keep playing and move through it. Yeah. So we'll see if he'll be able to recover mentally as we get into game two. Both players just selecting their stages. 
it'll it is to be interesting. I am curious to see what they end up going towards, right? Or if we see a character switch as well. Do we see I don't think we saw a character switch think, off Aiden. I think he stayed on Me Swordfire the entire time. I think both these players stayed on their characters the entire time last week, so I'm not expecting a character switch to come out, but it's definitely possible. We can see if it happens. Because we did have a Lucas and a... I, did Lil Tay... Uh, no. Was it AMPC? Two... Was it AMPC on Niagara that was a Lucas player? Maybe. Because it was... No, it couldn't have been, because that was the matchup that Gene was playing against. Mm, yeah. It may have been Mr. Paytonator against Lil Tay's, and that's why I thought Lil Tay's was the Lucas. Maybe, but... But there's definitely... There was definitely two... We mm. should see two Lucas players today. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think we will. I'm, one of them might have been from Marist, though. And Marist is not going to be playing, so... Maybe, potentially not two Lucases, but we'll see. Uh, the bands do come through. We're going to be getting into the game pretty soon here. Uh, I don't really think characters were the problem, though. I feel like that was just sort of the matchup. Or not the matchup, that was sort of the players. Uh, it was an unfortunate SD, but barring that, it was a really close game the whole time. So I don't think that Aiden should really get into his head too much and think about switching characters. And I don't think that Gene should really worry about the matchup either. Uh, and he should just focus on like keeping doing what he was doing to win in that game. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think at the end of the day, that's that's what you can keep doing, right? Is chugging along. Mm-hmm. And it looks like Pokemon Stadium 2 will be the selected stage, so we're just going to have both players pick that, and we'll get into the next match pretty quickly here. Yeah, it it should be good. I mean, I'm I'm curious to see, because I still don't think we saw Aiden do his down B. I don't think we know if it's the counter or, or the shine. Yeah, I actually have no clue. But... <laughs> Can you imagine if he just has like a million prepared sword fighters and he like counter picks which like down B he wants to have? That would be galaxy brain because we are playing double blind picks. That's completely illegal. Yeah. So that'd be, oh, that would be really, really interesting as I believe we had another disconnect. Yeah. Unfortunate so connection from one of these colleges or both potentially. Nintendo Online not known as being the greatest online around, so... Yeah, it, it is unfortunate. It, it doesn't always work, but hopefully we should be hearing back for them momentarily here, and we'll give you an update as soon as we can. But until then, we will hop to a quick break once again. Thank you all for tuning in to the EGF Legia Founders Invitational, and we will be back with you momentarily.
Welcome back, everybody. Sorry for another little round of technical issues. We have Sunday College connected back in. We're going to get back into it in a second. Reminder, we are going to be going to Pokemon Stadium 2. That was the stage selected. Yeah, PS2 is a... I, I personally think it's the most balanced stage in the game. But... I don't know. I think it's really big. I think it's really big. Uh, yeah. I, I think it gives it. a lot of advantage to some campier characters. You can kind of just run away, but... Oh well. I, I I guess the easiest the easiest option would be battlefield is probably the the fairest, but even then I feel like that yeah, that really enables a lot of shenanigans. Game. Yeah, the triplats are kind of weird. I feel like in this game there's not really one stage that's kind of just like the generalist in the way that you had Smashville and Smash Four as. But yeah, there's no neutral stage in that sense. Mm -hmm. Did that but, shock him uh, just jab lock? Is that can you do that? That's crazy. That. Might be a thing that Lucas can do. Oh, okay. The forward air. Lucas's forward air is interesting. It it feel, it looks a little laggy, but I don't actually think it is in practice. No, I don't think so either. Um, Lucas's there is something I'd like to see more of in this matchup. Yeah. Uh, it's really good for contesting the sword and poking out with that little bit of a hitbox. It doesn't do a lot of percent, but just denies a lot of spacing options from your opponent. Yeah, and if anybody was... Just tuning in and unsure who's playing at the moment. We do have Siena College's Aiden playing against St. Peter University's Gene on. Mm -hmm. And this game, like last game, incredibly close so far. Barely any percent, like one combo of percent separating the two players. Yeah, Aiden looking to try and close it out and gain that advantage. And I'm really liking Gene's playstyle, right? Of not being afraid to jump off stage and say, all right, if you want to. You want to get in at me with the swordy gameplay? You're gonna have to come and jump off. Oh, holding yeah. down past the ledge, gonna catch Gene really, really off guard and kill him. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think that was a good read. I'm unsure if that was just like an attempt or because he has done it every time, so he might just be trying to bait it out and got lucky that time, or if that it's was a really good really read. Safe. It is really safe. It's a really good recovery. Oh yeah, it's something that you can't. It like. It's less of a read and more of an option coverage thing where, like, the worst case scenario is you recover and it's like, whatever. And, and yeah, now is a two stock lead? Blowing up now. Yeah. yeah. I mean. That was, like, basically a zero to death, right? Did Gene touch Aiden? I, I think maybe he got one jab. Yeah, but oh my god. Oh my goodness, the pogo combo. stick is coming out in reverse. This game looking completely different from game one. Game one really close the whole time and an unfortunate SD. And this game, Gene is getting dominated. And we still have no idea what Aiden's down B is. I just, I just want to make that very clear. Yeah. That man has, really cool yeah, that man has not touched that button. He is waiting for that clutch situation to surprise his opposition as they both go for the just recovery. The Lucas managed to get over it, go for the ledge, get in the invulnerability. A good grab. That grab looks real jank. Mm -hmm. And remember, with our format, it's really important that Gene is able to take this stock here. And if he isn't, that is going to be three points going towards Siena College. It's putting them up to ten points. Yeah, a really big three stock to get. As Gene was starting to try and close the gap, he earns more points for his team than Gene earned for his in that first game. Going to really help out Siena College to maintain their lead here as we go into game three, playing for those two match win points. So if we see Gene get a three stock here, he would take mm -hmm. the win, which would put St. Peter's up to nine points. So, yeah. yeah. So they could really, really close this lead here very, mm -hmm. very easily if they oh, manage to win this game. Possible. Yeah, 100%. But we'll have to see if they're able to. If game three looks like that, Siena College is going to be incredibly happy. Yeah, I mean... Siena College definitely isn't complaining, and I don't think St. Peter's is going to complain if we see Gene 3 stock his opposition, as yeah. they are now going to select their maps once again. I Where do you think we end up? Since we saw Siena pick PS2, mm -hmm. what do you think the counterpick stage is for Lucas in this situation, Jebel? For Lucas? I don't know. I really... I feel like this is a matchup where the stage isn't that important. I feel like you probably don't want to go to a triplat, just given that little bit of ladder pogo combo we saw at the end of that last game. It uh, it makes triplats pretty scary. Um, 
So you want to get those out of there. But after that, I feel like both these characters have fairly similar goals. So the stage doesn't actually matter all that much. Is is this the Yoshi's Island map pick? I really, you know, it we could say not. it's not. It's Kalos. It's Kalos. We're but I had, I had a dream. My favorite stage. As a New Englander, we love Kalos. Yeah, that's it's a really popular stage over in your scene, isn't it? It is, yeah. And Kalos, I love this stage. It's so pretty. It's so cool. It's like Final Destination with a little bit of spice, you know? Yeah, yeah, just just walls, just a little bit. Like you just you just put a little bit of spice on it. I could agree with yeah. that. But yeah, you you New Englanders really really mm -hmm. enjoy Kalos. Yeah, we got light. If light's ever not on Kalos and it was his counter pick, it's actually like like it's not light. It's an alien. It's an alien. Yeah, um, light always gets Kalos. And, and again, coming out with these pairs, they're really, really working out already. Oh, oh my goodness, Genie's put into such a position. Oh, Is he going to be able to get the recovery here? Hit into the NATO. Okay, okay. He manages to get his foot in now. The PK fire coming out. Good shield, good shield. Going for the roll. This is why we like Kalos. Walls make recovery sick. They do, they do. Gene and bounced uh, off the wall to get another update. And it worked out for really, really well. But the zoning that we're seeing from Aiden at the moment is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, yeah. No, a really great recovery. But uh, a re great recovery doesn't make you win the game. It just makes you not lose the game. And Gene is still very, very behind right now. The good shield, good shield into the oh. neutral. Gets the parry timing down into that up B. It's going to find the connect. I mean, that's going to be a stock up. Aiden's only on 50%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a very big lead. We're probably going to see a lot of extra credit being built here, unless Gene is able to pull off some miracle combo. But Lucas is not one of those characters that's known for like getting those zero to death combos. He plays a much slower, grindier game typically. Yeah, and each it's it every stock matters here for both teams, right? Because uh, well, and even more so for St. Pierce, because if they lose another stock, a good DI coming out from Gene as he tries to get this recovery. All right, manages to get it. The neutral wears coming out, getting some good damage, but he needs to find something big. Because if he keeps just landing on top of his opposition and into those down bees, he's just going to get stopped. Oh yeah, we see Gene really not respecting uh, Aiden's shield, and we see him getting so many up out of shield punishes for it. Uh, you just have to space your things better into a character with such a strong out of shield option. And yeah. you see it working out really well for Aiden, being able to get those punishes. Another three stock potential here for him. Back throw coming out. I mean, Gene. Oh, Gene's great no if he finds one stock, coming. right? Because even though his opposition would be getting, you're still reducing a point from your opposition, right? Oh yeah, every single stock counts in this format. Yeah, so so it benefits your team massively. Obviously, Gene wanted to come in here and win this round, but every stock he gets helps his team further down the line. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, every stock you get off is really important, but every stock you win is also really important, and that's going to be four more points going over to Siena College. Two stock victory, taking the match, puts them up 14 to four. Yeah, they've over got St. Peter's College. A Peter's massive University. lead, but that could all change Gerbil coming into game three as we get our next lot of players in. We could see a massive upset if we see a 3-0 coming out from St. Peter's now. Oh yeah, we're only two games in, right? So if St. Yeah. Peter's has similar two games for themselves, match five will be what's important. Yeah. And we do have Mike for Siena College coming in and Sho, who I believe is the team captain for St. Peter's University coming in. So mm -hmm. this should be interesting, right? Having your captain who, and I, we, we touched on, we touched base on this a little bit last week. Having your captain dead in the center is really, really interesting because presumably they're your best player. Presumably, yeah. Presumably, right? Maybe they're just the best at coordinating and you end up having them as captain. But... Mm -hmm. Presumably, you'd, you'd expect your captain to be at least in a very good spot. Yeah, you want your captain to be a good player. You want him to be, like, the head, inspiring the rest of the team to go forward. So, definitely uh, an interesting position. Typically, you see best players as sort of, like, fourth or fifth as an anchor for the potential comeback. But maybe it's going to be a momentum swing type thing. Maybe show just really pops off here, inspires St. Peter's to go on and win the next few games. We'll have to find out.
Yeah, and we will be hopping to a quick break as our, we switch our players over and get all of that sorted. We hope you're all having a good time and we will be back with you momentarily. All right, we are back for Siena College's Mike versus St. Peter's University's show. Show playing Lucina. He won, not decisively, but fairly solidly last week up against Flubber from Niagara University. And Mike for Siena College, uh, their team captain, actually, um, did... Yeah, he played Anchor, yeah. Uh, he and played he, Anchor a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, he so, barely won his match. That was incredibly close. So I wonder, I, I do I do wonder if Sienna saw that St. Peter's were running their captain in third from last mm -hmm. week and made that switch up for this week. Because for anybody that doesn't know, the players pre-lock in their roster. So... The T RTOs are informed these players will play in these positions, and they are locked in before the players get to see who they're playing against. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely some really interesting studying and mind game potential there for lining up which picks you have where. And if I remember right from last week, Mike was a Squirtle player, right? He really liked playing Squirtle, didn't he? Uh, or am I wrong? No, I Mike was the one that, I, No, no, no. We had two Pokemon trainers. Mike was the really one that, Sorry to interrupt you. Mike was the one really, that didn't really touch good Squirtle. Oh, okay. Mike was really, really good on Ivysaur and found some fantastic kills on Charizard right. uh, because he was up to like 200% and just kept using oh, Side yeah. B because you don't yeah. care at that just, point. Yeah, what are you going to do? Take more percent? Get yeah, you're already in kill yeah. yeah, you're already in kill percentage. You might as well use that rage to your advantage with a massive kill move. Yeah, and speaking of uh, being in kill percent, we've seen a show here. Oh! <laughs> Both players really playing the mind games there, jumping off the ledge and countering, but Mike just ready to grab it and chuck him into the blast zone. Only 46% extra credit being racked up. Almost just going to be nullified by a single combo from Mike's Ivy Sword. Yeah, and Ivysaur, I mean, Pokemon Trainer is one of those characters that I talk about quite a bit because I think they're a really interesting character because you need to learn three matchups, mm -hmm. right? And, and and that's not an easy thing to do when every Pokemon Trainer plays differently as well. Oh yeah, no, this character is incredibly complex to play and to play against, so it's, it's always really interesting. I'm glad they're a top tier. Like, yeah, and but they're a super expressive character, right? Because they're so complex and you have so many different play styles. It feels, for, for anybody that's familiar, I probably should use Dragon Ball as an example, but in the UK, I'm more known for like the Marvel scene and everything, right? And Pokemon Trainer always, to me, has felt like a Marvel character or a Marvel team because you have that three, that three character nature and everybody plays them slightly differently and expresses it differently. And I really, really enjoy seeing that. 
Yeah, no, Pokemon Trainer is a really good character. And while you were talking about that, Sienna's mic did actually get a really good forward smash ledge trap read. Uh, and it has the advantage here for you. That flared lift shut me up. I cannot believe he just pressed it. Oh I my mean, god. He, he pressed oh. it, and you know what? You know what? He made it happen. Two points. <laughs> going to Sienna Ooh. College, putting them up a 12 point lead. At the Not moment, the we are going to have to see some sweeps coming out in the next couple games from St. Peter's. Yeah, I'll forgive Mike for not getting the dunk. That down air was still pretty sick, so. <laughs> and it got the kill. It got there. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. I can't talk. I can't, no. I can't explain what's happening because there's always something new, better, that's happening. It's, uh, you know what? It's, it's some good gameplay. I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating this. Because now but... they are going to move into counter picking, and I am curious to see where we end up that's an unfortunate if, way to go though getting like oh yeah if i'm lucina i probably want to go to a more flat stage because your sword is really good at covering a lot of distance do we see town and not... sea i'm gonna say town and um, sea yeah. I, I think I, th I think ta I would go Town and City. I think in a lot of situations, right? Because it eliminates a lot of the yeah, and that's oh, exactly where we're is. going. Yeah. Town and City, uh, very interesting platform layout. Relatively flat a lot of the time, but then when the platforms are there, they're at these like really crazy heights. Um, they don't offer a lot of like mobility options to either player. They're more for like fringe combo extensions, which means they are good for Lucina, who wants to be able to control space and keep their opponent to come from very predictable angles and abuse that big sword she has to keep them out. But it's a switch off of Pokemon Trainer and onto Wolf. And I, which I, I think really, he last time. Did I, he switch to Wolf last time? Uh, I think he did on game three. No, there was yeah. only two games, wasn't there? No, no there, there was three, three games, yeah. Three. Game game one and two were Pokemon Trainer, and you went to Wolf game three. So, yeah. bringing it out a little bit earlier now. A little bit, yeah. Wolf, a really interesting character. Not to discredit Wolf players, it, it's still a very skill intensive character, but whenever you play against this character, it almost feels more like you're playing against yourself. You know? Like, Wolf is a really linear character relatively he has very few options but they're so good that you can know exactly what a wolf is going to do and you're still getting hit by it it's actually crazy yeah he's he's just got really Ooh. good boxes like overall right like just his hit boxes and her boxes are very beneficial to the wolf player and managing to weave in his pistol whenever you can i think is what differentiates like a bad wolf player from a good wolf player, right? Because you're being able to build in that little bit of extra damage every time. Yeah, it's uh, a really big difference maker. Spacing is super duper important on him, and a good wolf player should be pretty. I mean, we are seeing some good spacing at the moment, so I can't, I can't really discredit this at all. But I do agree with you in the sense that wolf can be pretty linear. But I feel like, I feel like he does have quite a few option selects in a lot of situations, though, especially on Town and City with, like, like you said, those kind of fringe platforms. Yeah, Wolf has a lot of option selects, but he also has some of the best, like, just raw spacing punishes in the game, where, like, no matter what, who, which Wolf you're playing against, if you miss a forward air, they just up smash, right? Like, Yeah, but that, so, like, that's, it's just a really consistent and safe punish. Oh, yeah, no, 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 I, I mean as, like, how good of a character Wolf is. I don't yeah. mean this is any, like, bad type thing, it's just, like, it's such a hard character to play against and so different from Pokemon Trainer that we see it is kind of shaking up our uh, show here. Yeah, show getting again though, right? We do see getting a little bit too close to the edges here. Mike getting hit by uh by show's recovery every single time so far. Yeah, not holding shield and waiting for it to snap to ledge, not respecting it quite enough. It's the percent that's up. It does, it does add up, because now you are one down combo smash kill percent. Now you are in kill percent. Mm -hmm. You know, so it does it does add up, but okay, good. Good spacing coming out, look for the root, okay. Not quite the able cross to get up. There was, there, there was a cross up attempt coming out from Mike there, wasn't able to find it. Going for it again, but show does read it. 
the, the, it, this, this is a very neutral heavy matchup, right? With Wolf oh, yeah, versus... Oh yeah, both these characters as... are really big neutral. Oh no. Oh, well, that's, um, that's extremely unfortunate. Astro <laughs> manages to find that with... Not, the, the, not like 100. It's not the worst at No, but you always want to get extra credit, right? Yeah, and ESD is a badass. Oh, and, yeah, a bit like that. Yeah, a little bit like that. And ESD is a badass team. Yeah, it's it's never it's never fun to see. It's never fun to be. And that is going to be Sienna College taking it with one stock, and that's the set one, right? That was two zero. So yep. that's going to be taking up three points, and nineteen points. Yeah, a very big difference. Uh, four to nineteen, but yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess 19 to 4. We have Sienna on the left, St. Peter's on the right, right? But uh, that is a very, very commanding lead. Uh, is it possible for St. Peter's to get the comeback? It is. It, it's completely possible. You can get 8 points for each win, potentially. Um, so that's 16. Actually, that's not great math. In order like, for St. Peter's to get the comeback right now, yeah, they would need... Two, three three stocks and a yep. two or a three stock. Yeah, they'd need they need a good amount here, wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's possible. A very big disadvantage. It's possible in the most like hypothetical of terms, but there's always a time for it to happen, right? Like, yeah, no matter how improbable something is, there's always the chance. Yes, and and I think that's what makes this this rule set the format mm -hmm. so interesting because sienna college have won three of the five games so far mm -hmm. but if they have two awful games now and yeah. saint peter's just sweep it away then they they can bring it back and i i think that's an interesting format because now those games for rory and nick are on sienna's side and uh fire god duelist and jazzy g on St. Peter's University, those games matter more now for St. Peter's than ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, every single game, every single stock is going to be critical for St. Peter's University going into these last two games here. Yeah, it definitely uh, will be. And even if they do have some slip-ups, even if they're not able to make the comeback happen, uh, any ties later on in the uh, in the little tournament setup will be decided by who has better stock and game counts, I believe, overall. So even if you're not able to take the set, to take the match, it is important to play it out to get those tiebreaker points in case of any cases happening in the future. Yeah, well, in the stock differential, at the moment, in the actual general standings, Yep. Uh, from the start of this week, so before this set was played, St. Mm -hmm. Peter's were up seven. They yeah, had a they were 12 a stock differential against Niagara. Yep. So this at the moment it is a massive blow to them because they already had a net total of seven difference. Over Siena College. Now yes. Siena's earning them right back, potentially. Yeah, 100%. Siena College at the moment is now in... A, what, a 13, 13 stock lead? Yeah, math is hard. Um, math, math is, right. uh, no, nine stock, nine stock. No, can I do math? I cannot. It is two in the morning. I really cannot do math at this time. 34 to 28 is... Where, wait, what? Six. Or 26, 26. 34 to 26, so that's eight stock. Because Sienna has 15 from week one, and then currently 19, which puts them at 34. St. Peter's got 22 the first oh, week. Oh, okay, yes, that, that 100, okay, that's where you were getting the stat from. My brain yeah. completely stopped. I was like, the, the difference is 12 to, to 5. Where are you getting 34 from? <laughs> yeah, so uh, in terms of total stocks taken between these two weeks so far, it's 34 to 26, which puts Siena College currently eight stocks total ahead of St. Peter's University and like overall grand standings. And we are getting in to game four with Rory on Bowser and Fire God Duelist on Captain Falcon. Yeah, very, very different characters uh, for these two players here. 
Yeah, I think every matchup we've had, they've been uh, the equivalent weight class, haven't they? So oh. far. Oh. Ricardo went for it all. Yeah, I mean. And he's just knocking it all. No, that was that was unfortunate for Ricardo there. Now a stock up already for Siena College. I mean, 76% as well. Considering how quick that went, that was a really good attempt from Ricardo, but didn't yeah, quite but... make it. Going for the up B there. Oh, okay. Doesn't get punished. If that, if that had went the opposite direction, that would have hurt. Yeah, no. I said this last time though. Bowser basically starts to like negative. That was a sick dunk. Okay, I take I'm, it back. I'm... I'm all about those dunks. Ricardo making it happen, getting a good grab at the moment. He's committing to it, okay? He backs off. He, he goes, you know what? That that backfired a little bit before. We got good damage in. We've equalized it. Now we're going to try and commit for it, try and build this lead out. But Bowser just did two punches to Falcons, like six. Yeah. No, I was, uh, I was literally about to make a point about how Bowser started to, like, negative percent effectively. And how he's, like, not in kill percent until, like, 150. And you have to put in so much more work, but... When you get a dunk like that, it doesn't really matter. And when you get a reverse dunk like that, it uh... <laughs> a reverse dunk, that's what up smashes are now? Yeah, that that's that's what up smashes are. That was a <laughs> disrespectful <laughs> reverse dunk. Yeah. It, 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 it's but flowed. Or smash, even it's straight back up. Captain Falcon, one of the characters who really is able to break through Bowser's pull. Falcon's also a very combo intensive character, right? You have a lot of shenanigans on him that you can you can really make happen, but also you, you oh, punish Oh my dead? goodness. He was at 70 from the <laughs> other <laughs> from side the of the other stage. Side. <laughs> There's no way. You know when How we say Bowser's at negative percent? That's yeah. why we say Bowser starts at negative percent. <laughs> What was that forward smash? He he just he just roared that forward smash and there it, was no range. It, that was he didn't like need 70. it. He didn't need it. <laughs> what do you mean, Captain Falcon died? <gasps> okay, well that is Rory taking game one <laughs> with was... one stock over St. Peter's University. Was that um, just really bad DI, or did Bowser just I hit him that hard? So. There's I no way Bowser hit him that hard, right? Like, there's there no even, way... There were no red sparks. No, no so, sparks. so that had to have been bad DI. I think so, yeah, but... Even then, no, no amount of bad DI is gonna kill you that early, unless it's from a Bowser F smash, so... It's a mix of both. And now, uh, that one stock going to Siena College means that the best St. Peter's University can do is tie this set 20 to 20. And St. Peter's are going to go to Final Destination. Mm -hmm. Which I think is the right pick? I think so. What does is, what is Bowser do on Final Destination? Forward air a bunch? Maybe neutral D? <laughs> like... I mean, apparently it should forward smash. <laughs> this is all the work for you. <laughs> forward smash and pray. Oh. Unfortunately, praying not the best strategy when they when the other side has Saint Peter for their team, but uh we'll have you know, to see. But this is a good counter pick. That for that sure. forward air was about as fair and as functional as our caster math. Caster math, yeah, yeah. Like Jeez, oh, that, that really, really happened. And look, this is what I'm saying, right? When I say that Falcon is a really intensive com uh, combo character and you just saw him put in 61% and there was there was nothing he could do out of it. He could have tried to air dodge, but he, that, that linked really well. Yeah, Bowser's sitting around 0% right now. A very solid lead for Ricardo. <laughs> yeah, Ricardo. <laughs> wow, that was a sentence. Uh yeah. Oh, the knee! Ooh. Give him the knee, Ricardo. It's really starting to pattern. Not going to go for the dunk this time. Attempts it. Does get punished on that edge guard. Good follow up. Oh, mm. looking to try and get the up smash. Does that was a good soft grab. Up smash. Oh, all right. The up. If there's comes. one character in this game that can kill Bowser early, though, it's going to be Captain Falcon. A bit like that. That's going to be Ricardo yeah. here picking up a stop. Really good back air. Ninety-six percent. All it's going to take is one smash, and we will see this even up. Oh. Or maybe this. A, oh, good DI. Those. Really good now. DI coming out from Ricardo. Mm -hmm. And it looks like in less a miracle like this. Happened from Ricardo. Ricardo. Oh my goodness, that, that's it, Ricardo. that's it. And and this is what I mean, the right? Three stock dream lives. Falcon can just gimp. One more of those. 
Falcon can even gimp Bowser if he gets him far enough off the stage, and he has the combos to do it. Yeah, but Ricardo, once again, not DIing well, means that St. Peter's University can now no longer win the match. They are playing just for overall stock count now, trying to keep that within a good range. I mean, yeah, that, that is unfortunately. Oh, but that's gonna is be game. Melee? I mean, and this Wait, is quick. Melee? This it, we are playing melee. This is you are watching melee. It's the new graphics <laughs> update. What? That, yeah. <laughs> This is Melee HD. You just stop need him. All right, cool. Uh, you know what? Melee HD, Nintendo, make it happen. <laughs> we already have it. We're playing it right now. We're playing it right now? I'm into it. Uh, okay. Can't wave dash, but close enough. Um, and that will be a two stock from Ricardo, but unfortunately, just not enough points on his whole team to get there. Um... I mean, I'm pretty positive. Yeah, I guess there is, and is that I was trying to think of some jank that they might be able to do, but nope. the most that his teammate can score is eight points, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Well, oh. if they're okay, well there, well there, we might we might be cast a mathing this, right? Nope. They get no. It's they nineteen, isn't it? Yeah. The, the yep. most optimal they could get is nineteen. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, uh, Siena College has officially locked in the match. They are going to be 2-0 in total match score. St. Peter's University is going to be 1-0. But we are going to play out the rest of the games. Uh, as we said before, uh, total game count and total stock count are both going to be relevant statistics potentially moving forward. Uh, and we want to give all the players a chance to play. And just watching as much Smash as possible is always great. So we are going to wait for the players to prep game three. Yeah, I am curious to see and... where they go because it is Bowser's pick now. So mm -hmm. do, do, you, do you go for something meme that kind of benefits you, like Lila, with the, or do you, do you not? Do you, do you just go straight and narrow? I want to go to Yoshi's Island Melee. I want those small blast zones for Bowser. I don't really care about triplats that much, but just the sooner my opponent dies, the better. That's yeah, what I care about. I, I, I think I think that's what a Bowser player wants, right? It is a double-edged sword in that it limits your survivability, but we did see a lot of stocks lost from Rory just from not being able to recover, right? He didn't die off the sides or the top all that often. He mostly died off the bottom. And close blast zones don't make you die less off the bottom. No, so, they don't. Or they don't make you die more off the bottom, sorry. So I think it's definitely a really solid counter pick. Yeah, so Yeah, that that definitely could be the way to go. I am curious. We aren't seeing any updates on these pick and bands at the moment, so that's there's some interesting situations with this matchup, right? Because mm -hmm. post blast zones, like you said, is a really, really double edged sword, because Falcon can just carry you to them. Yeah, you really can. Like he literally can just pick you up and carry you with his feet like all the way to the blast zone. Yeah, it's a ledge, but it's sort of one of those like risk reward things where it benefits you more. So even though it's scary, I think it's definitely the right choice. It just is really scary to go to. So we do have a little bit of a delay. Uh, just waiting for things to get sorted out here but we'll keep you updated in just a second. Yeah, we are seeing both the teams picking it out. Yeah, banning yep. Yoshi's Story and Kalos and going to Pokemon Stadium 2. Not at all the stage I would have expected. In fact, the exact the opposite, opposite of the stage I expected. That's a um, really big stage for Bowser. Yeah, I feel like you're just going to get nairplaned forever and yeah, no, never get a chance to hit Captain Falcon. I... This, That's a this really could, weird counter pick. Maybe we're completely wrong, you know? Maybe maybe we're He could he, know something he, I don't. Yeah, he is he is the Bowser player. But I definitely think we're in agreement where this stage is massive. Yeah. How are you supposed to ever like hit Falcon? Like run him down. He's so much faster than you. 
Like he's got, yeah, the Falcon's got so much room to play with, but okay, at the moment, it's the first hit, grab, and here, and here it goes, here it goes, grab, into the kick, again, follow it up, and then it'll try and commit with the knee, doesn't happen, there it is, going for the spike with the disrespect! Oh, oh, but the SD! He air dodged, yeah. He went for the spike, he didn't get it, and then he went for another one, and then air dodged and SD. He's super committed for that! Ricardo saying, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm gonna go for the big play, and that forward smash is a big play, evening up the stock out. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, Ricardo making it happen, right? He, he knows that it's... They can't get the exact amount of points at this point, right? Mm -hmm. So losing one stock to really commit to something for the memes, doing it once is fine, yeah. because if he wins, they're still getting four points, would take him to ten. Yeah, no. Yeah, you can definitely afford to throw away a few stocks, right? Uh, but you definitely don't, <laughs> you don't love to see it. But definitely playing for a little bit more fun here. Now that there's a little bit less on the line. Yeah, but at the moment. Oh, the Falcon kick coming out. Good punish. Ricardo looking to follow it up. The knee! I can't it's believe so that knee is still out. It's so good. It's so good, yeah. Right, and just like we said, we're seeing so much space being given to the Captain Falcon here. It's really hard for Bowser to get in and get these hits. And we can just see Captain Falcon extend his combos for so long. Those platforms actually working against him, well, it benefited him there, but was actually working against him because they're allowing Bowser to drop onto them because he's such a big body. And I'm wondering if that was the idea behind it. Stay central stage. Maybe. So if they tried to carry him, he'd pretty much always land on the platforms and cancel the carry. Oh, the command grab through the shield, almost killing there. Yeah, good reads. Good reads coming out. He's gonna look for something. Oh, tries to commit for it again. Is gonna get punished and possibly, no, really good DI. Oh, the fast drop, but it does survive. That, oh, and that's gonna be it. Falcon kick to kill. All right, two stocks going back to Ricardo. Yeah, bringing them up to 10 points. So, mathematically now, the only thing that we can see is if St. Peter's won 3-3 three, three and got the 2, they'd get 8 points, bringing them to 18. Mm -hmm. uh, so they mathematically can't win. However, if then in the next week we see Sienna drop their set and St. Peter's win theirs, they would yep. be ahead again because of stock differential. Yeah, currently Sienna, in terms of overall stock difference, is ahead by uh, 3 stocks. Yes. So... so if they can close it and get it to 14 points, mm -hmm. it would give them the edge in stock differential, at least going into that next set. Yeah. So even though this match is over, playing for the big brain, big game, overall stock count is still relatively important because those are a very close statistic so far. Yeah. And we are going to be going into round five with Sienna College's Nick playing against St. Peter University's Jazzy G. So we'll, we'll once again be right back with you as we switch this up. Thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you momentarily.
All right, hello everybody and welcome back to match five of Siena College versus St. Peter's University. We have Siena College's Nick playing against St. Peter University's Jazzy G. As a reminder, Siena College has currently won the overall match. Uh, there is no way for St. Peter's to get enough points to make the comeback happen, but we are going to play out this final game because we are keeping track of total stock counts and total game counts uh, for any tiebreaker situations moving forward. So it is good for both these teams to get the opportunity to have all five players play. And it's always just great to watch more Smash Brothers, you know? I mean, I don't think anybody, anybody is going to complain about seeing more Smash. And I'm... Super duper curious to see what we see coming out of Jazzy G at the moment because if we want to see them make this massive like gap closer, we need to see two three stocks. Yeah, which it's not an uh, it's not an easy task. It is definitely not an easy task. But Jazzy G not three stocks, but he did get two two stocks when he played against Crust last week or two weeks ago. So he definitely does seem like a solid player. Um, and two three stocks, not out of the realm of possibility. And even if he just gets two two stocks, it is a solid amount of sto uh, stocks and points being swung back in St. Peter University's favor. Yeah, and this matchup should be interesting. Shulk against Palutena. And I hate this matchup. Yeah, I mean, you're Shulk. a Palutena main, so it's lead awful. the way. I hate it. Uh, if you ask me what do you do against Shulk, the answer is I don't know. He has a really fat sword. He's really yeah. fast. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's the power of the Monado. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I think Palutena wins this matchup because Palutena is a broken character. I'm just bad and salty. That's reasonable. But I really oh. like, I mean, I really like Shulk, like, as Shulk a character. Really and I really enjoy his playstyle in Smash. But, oh my god, if you're going to slash like that, that's not going to work out for you. Mm -hmm. Good Shulk, up. Okay. I believe can air, uh, air slash out of shield, but... It's not as lean as some other uppies out of shield. You don't no. have to space it over the way. It's not me, Gunner. No, it's <laughs> definitely not me, Gunner. No. Oh, Which is, I'm surprised we've seen more me sword fighter than me, Gunner. In I think me sword fighter is more popular just because of how well known that really powerful kill confirm is. That's uh, true. It's sort of the character that everyone started trying out once it got popular. Or once it got unbanned as well. Near the, near the end of Smash 4's life. Oh, good back throw there. The He's going to be able to find that first stock. He was flying. I mean, Palutena. I, I, I definitely agree with you. I think I think if the Palutena player doesn't know how to space out properly, and this isn't a call out onto you, my friend, yeah. <laughs> even though oh. you hate this matchup. But I feel like if Palutena can, I feel like if Palutena spaces it correctly and manages to just find those openings and not overcommit or overextend to certain things, then she's in a really good spot. However, that, oh, <laughs> The re-grab getting punished really hard. Yeah, that was a uh, really that, down air. that was a good read, to be fair. Like reading that we were going to go for the regrab and not trying to recover it onto the platform was a really, really good read by Nick. Yeah. Part of the reason I hate this matchup so much is there's a really good shulk in my area. And one thing he does that uh Sienna's Nick is not doing a lot of is forward air. Shulk's forward air has like negative landing line. I swear to God, you gain frames. You like go into the future when you hit the ground with that move. Yeah, um, you're, you're, you're positive on forward air. Yeah. Is that is that what you're, yeah, like you're insinuating? Landing, like, not even on hit or on shield, just on landing, you gain frames as Shulk, right. like, I swear to God. That so move is just so good. So on hit and on shield, you're, you're negative, but on landing, you're positive. Oh, yeah. no, just oh, missing oh, the recovery there. That was so unfortunate. But like, right, going, going into Buster. Or like Cluster Monado, and you just like forward air a bunch. It's Palutena just has to respect it. Yeah, like, I mean also you just speed. Have to let you stand there. Speed short hop forward airs on Shulk is also it's horrifying. Terrifying. <laughs> it's so scary. I like, like PTSD flashbacks. If if people get the rhythm down, especially if Shulk players get the rhythm down of speed and knowing like exactly when to short hop and mm -hmm. get like yeah, you, you manage to cancel out quite a lot. That. You, you really could put in a lot of work just hitting the same buttons over and over again. Oh, yeah. 
Shulk's definitely a character where even though he has a sword, he wants to play a more aggressive game where he's like aggressively spacing, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Versus like defensively spacing. Um, where you want to be positioning on the tip of your sword because it's so long that if you space it so you're like have your opponent at the tip of your sword, it's almost impossible to punish. But it requires really precise spacing, so yeah. it's very difficult. I, I yeah, and re I think I think spacing, spacing. I don't think it's defensively mm -hmm. spacing it. Oh my goodness, the holy fire is going to come out though, though and find yeah. that last stock. We were talking about spacing for so long there. We didn't even talk about the importance of Palutena spacing. Palutena spacing is really powerful, and Jazz EG will take that game two stocks to zero, earning two more points for St. Peter's. And unfortunately, it looks like this might end up being pretty close overall. And just all the blowouts were so, like, front-loaded for Siena College. Yeah, that was unfortunate. But uh, now, I'm interested to see where Shulk takes Palutena. I definitely don't expect any character switches. I feel like nobody randomly picks up and plays Shulk. I feel like that's got to be a Shulk main, you know? Uh, and you don't really play other characters. But in terms of stages, um, I don't really know what Shulk loves. Palutena is a big fan of Yoshi's Island melee. Uh, yeah. The close blast zones really help her out, get those really nice early kills. Because that's the one thing Palutena doesn't have is a consistent early kill option. Once you're at like 120, 130, anything she does will kill you. But it's hard for her to find those kills before then. And Yoshi's Island really helps mitigate that like one only weakness that she has. What uh, you're saying is mm -hmm. Shulk takes Palutena to Yoshi's Island. Uh, no, actually, I think you should go to um, Castle Siege. They should gentlemen there. Uh, Castle Siege isn't on. Castle Siege there. isn't on the stages. Um, yeah, they should gentlemen there. Yeah. I, you know what? I don't. I, I really, I really don't think Castle Siege is the way to go. In in any case, in any matchup, <laughs> maybe if you're online DDD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're Pulse. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, dude, he made that work. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Um. Go watch EGF uh, high school matches. Yeah. Uh, we that that's some that... but no um in all seriousness i think that shulk probably likes uh ps2 he's good at running around he probably likes most stages this isn't really a stage specific matchup it's more of a game knowledge and like personal ability specific matchup where both these characters can kind of go in on the other one and it really comes down to who's better at the end of the day a lot of the time yeah. With Palutena obviously having an advantage just because she's Palutena and she's not fair. Uh, but. You don't think Palutena's fair? I don't think she's fair. No, I think any character who could be considered top 10, top 15 isn't fair. Like, that, and Palutena certainly within that range. Yeah. I, I, you know what? We're, we're talking about things being not fair. I think that, I think that's fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's a fair statement. Uh, I, so that's why I play her, because uh, you can just turn <laughs> off your brain and press neutral air, and it's great. I love it. I mean, it it takes it takes some practice getting down those ladder combos. Oh no, no, no. Pat Palutena is a really hard character. I can yeah. beam all I want. She's difficult. Every character in this game is difficult. You need some good uh, spacing. Like, yeah, Pokemon Stadium Two is going to be the pick. A pretty neutral stage. This is one of the matchups where Pokemon Stadium 2 really is a solid, like, neutral pick. I wouldn't give either character a huge advantage going into it. Uh, you know what, though? We are seeing a character switch to Young Link. Oh. Palutena I would give Young Link the advantage on this stage. You know, you were, you were saying, you, you were kind of, you were kind of down-talking the, the boy. Switch. Yeah, I was uh, not expecting it. I really the Nick not think there would be And play. his Shulk plays. And mm -hmm. saying that he probably doesn't play anything else, but maybe this man, maybe maybe he was doing that for fun. Maybe this is just a, a <laughs> that was a pocket pick, and now he's bringing out the young link. Yeah, you really never know. Uh, so far, not looking like the pocket pick. Down thirty percent out the gate. Ooh, and a solid neutral to carry. Palatine's just broken. 
a huge yes. Yeah. That would be really bad. No, that was a good. All right, right. Managing to recover that. Good punish coming out from Jazzy G. Good grab. Oh my goodness, that almost connected. The spacing at the moment is really, really on point. Jazzy G really showing an understanding of Palutena overall. Looking to try and get another grab that does get punished for it by the double forward air. I mean, it's it's not looking great. <laughs> no, it is definitely not looking great for Sienna's Nick here. Uh, but Young Link has potential to be a really explosive character. He can set up some really solid links. Uh, but Palutena is not a character really known for like getting exploded on. She has a lot of consistent, safe options that make it hard to get those really huge combos on her with. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good DI coming out. Gonna look for the recovery. Isn't gonna get enough vertical momentum for it. Yeah, he waits too long and he just falls too low. But he was he was scared. I mean, Jazzy G was holding that corner, right? Ready to pounce at any second because mm -hmm. me and you both know Palu players are 100% jumping off of that edge and trying to neutral air them. Oh, yeah. Neutral air is disgusting. It trades, but you die. And, like... Palutane is neutral air really does it all. It edge yeah. guards, it combos, it kills, it does your taxes. Like... It, it, it orders your shopping for you. It's it's really <laughs> like, like it's 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 there. It, it does everything. It's fantastic. Yeah. It is her best move. I, I don't think anybody would argue that Palutena's neutral air is not See, her best. I feel fun. like there is somebody who would argue it, and that just goes to show that so many of her moves are so good that a move that clearly broken might not be considered her best move by some people. Like, I think that's the more crazy part of it. Yeah, I mean, it ladders. Like, it, it does some crazy <laughs> things, but I mean, uh, that up is also going to put like some that? work. Oh. No, that, that offer is also pretty good. Palutena is just a good all-round kit. Like, I don't think anybody could say that <laughs> yeah. she doesn't work really, really well. And when you put in the work like Jazzy G is right now and mm -hmm. spacing it out and just playing it really, really well, you, you can't even say that it's a broken character, right? Like, I, I, know, I know we're ragging on the character a little bit, but Jazzy's playing this really, really well. Oh, no. Palutena is one of the top tiers that is most, like, fundamental based. Right? Yeah. Like, if you're a good Palutena player, you're just a good Smash player. It, it's a there's bit like no, if you're if you're no if you're a good Ryu player in Street yeah, Fighter, exactly. or if yeah, it, yeah, it is it is just how it is. Or if you've just got your electrics down in Tekken, like that, it's <laughs> yeah. just fundamentals. And we see 200 percent finally going to be when Palutena loses the stock, but a solid lead here could be Jazzy G getting another two stock for his team. Okay, down throw into the forward air. Just playing this edge guard oh, yeah. down. Going for the swap. <laughs> it was what spicy. What a way to end it. And that is... That is it. That is the last hit of this match. Bringing up St. Peter's to 16 points against Siena College's 20. That is yeah, only a said... four-point yeah. differential. That actually... Like we Doing said, really close. <laughs> coming in, the overall stock differential mm -hmm. over the two weeks, St. Peter's is still ahead. Yeah, they are. It's 20, 38 to 35. Yeah, so St. Have a th Peter's over the two weeks, up three stocks. Yeah, which... It, mm -hmm. You're feeling good, right? Well, up three stocks over Siena specifically. Yeah, um, so... Yeah, so they're they're leading overall, and then second place, they're still up three stocks. Yeah. Uh so in the timeline where Siena College loses next week, and it's two one to two one, St. Peter's University probably is, or assuming St. Peter's wins next week, right? That that's a really possible timeline, and in that case, St. Peter's has the advantage going into it, even yeah. without considering the fact that St. Peter's would have won and Siena would have lost. So they'd probably even net more stocks on top of that. Well, they both won their sets last week. So all this has done is made Sienna first position and St. Peter's yep. second position. And now out of Niagara and uh, Kinesis, we would see them, unless there's a massive, um, a massive stock differential from Kinesis, mm -hmm. we, we should, we, we shouldn't see an upset. Unless they would have to get a massive stock differential. Like, 
I don't yeah. think it was mathematically possible, but we will be jumping to a quick break as we switch mm-hmm. the teams over because I'm rambling on a little bit at the moment as I'm trying to do <laughs> cast a math at three thirty or at two thirty in the morning, which obviously is not working out for me. So we will be back very very shortly. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will be bringing in. Uh, I believe it's Niagara against Canisius. So that'll be a good match. That is the Battle of the Bridges coming up very shortly.
Hello and welcome back everybody to match two of the uh, Founders Invitational for Super Smash Brothers U uh, Ultimate. We are going to be having Canisius College versus Niagara University in the second match. Um, for those of you who weren't around for the first part, or for anyone who just needs a reminder, we're playing a modified crew battle format where instead of a traditional crew battle, we have each one player from each team play another player in a best of three, uh, earning points for their team based on how many stocks they have remaining at the end of each game in the best of three. Additionally, you're awarded an extra two points for winning the best of three on top of that. Whichever college has more points at the end of the best of three, or at the end of the five best of threes, sorry, is declared the winner of the match. That sound that sound about right? You get that? Yeah, I mean that made sense All to right. me. And this first All match, right, we are gonna see Pac-Man against Kirby. Mm -hmm. I I mean it was bound to happen at one point, right? We have two Pac-Man players. Yeah, and yeah, we you saw that last week. Yeah, we have we two Pac-Man like, players uh, and two Kirby players. This first mm -hmm. game is being played by Canisius's Carl, aka Ultra Cal, against mm -hmm. DLS, and DLS won his set last Playing week. Playing Kirby, right? Uh, I believe so. Three, uh, three stocks the first game, and then one stock the second game. Oh yeah, with Euro had like some SDs or something. I remember it was like some lag or something. But yeah, no, he won both of his matches, in both of his games, so pretty good player you'd expect, but right now he's getting zero to death still. Almost a minute into this match, and he has yet to hit Carl. I mean, I this Pac-Man player at the moment, Carl is putting in the really work. Like I have never guy. seen a... Oh, oh my god! <laughs> that kills? Wow. Apple kills? Right. This this might be the best Pac-Man player I've ever seen. I'm gonna be honest I mean, with you. I've watched T when like. Okay, well T. No. Okay, okay. Non-professional <laughs> Pac-Man player I've right, ever seen. Right, yeah, T, T's you kind of a freak of nature. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that. That's, that's oh, getting percent on the board, ten percent for DLS. But yeah, but when you're a stock down, hitting your first 10% when you've been stocked and 60% is rough. 43% now. Yeah, that was technically a zero to death, huh? Yeah, it was. A minute um, long do... zero to death. I think Kirby tries to get the neutral B here, right? Like... No way, that doesn't kill. There's no way that kills. Pac-Man oh has the... such a good recovery. He's dead, he's not no way! What a great gimp. Did, did we just Ultra Kirby get there. gimps? Yeah, honestly, he's... Recovery is deceptively bad. His jumps don't go that far, and his up is really not that great of a recovery rate. Like, I'd probably say Inkling has a better recovery than Kirby. Like. Reasonable. To be fair, though, I mean, launch Inkling was, was really, another really thing. Good, yeah. But uh, but no, you, even though it's deceptively bad, I think it's so deceptive that you just don't see it very often. You don't see Kirby. Oh yeah, no, it's really rare to see a Kirby that get that blatant. But we we do want to be seeing a stock being taken off of Carl here, right? DLS needs to be finding this for his team. And there it is. There's going to be the first stock. This might be the momentum swing that he wants. I think we need to see DLS trying to eat Pac-Man and get that neutral B. It's really good. I, I guess. I have to question, though. How much does DLS really know about the fruit? Like... Does That's DLS also very true. Like, but it, it really? gives. It, but, but the thing is, it gives him a projectile other than his up B that is, is really super good. punishable to try and contest Pac-Man. And when. Mm -hmm. When Carl is given oh, that chance done. to just sit there, that is, yeah, that's going to be that, unfortunately. When Carl's sitting there and able to just stand there and pick his fruit without being punished, mm -hmm. you, you need to be able to answer it with something. And I feel like trying to grab it so you can re answer Pac-Man fruit with Pac-Man fruit is a really good call. Uh -huh. That is that is something I wouldn't really have thought about, but I definitely agree. I think that does sound like a pretty good play. Uh, but that is Ultra Cow taking it two stocks to zero. Uh, two points up for Canisius. And if there was ever a match where we can say every stock matters, it was that last match we just watched. It was like 16 to 4. It was 19 to 4 at one point. And St. Peter's University almost ran it back. 
by the end yeah. there was four stocks difference. So every single stock that DLS takes, even if he doesn't win the match, every single stock DLS takes is so critically important for the rest of his team to potentially get a win like 10 games down the line. Yeah, no, 100%. And I mean, it's it's interesting because how often do Kirby players play against Pac-Man and Pac-Man players play against Kirby? <laughs> right? Like, it's such a rare matchup. You'd never expect it. You, 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 just, you just don't see it. Uh, like, are you back? I am rejoining the lobby right now as we had a slight uh, communication. They just started. Oh, no. Um, I'm telling them to restart the game. Yes, yes, that would that would 100 be the wise situation there. That was unfortunate. We had a slight disconnect, uh, slight connection issue, everyone. So we will be hopping to a quick break as we get this all sorted out, and we'll be back momentarily.
Welcome back, everybody. We just had match one and off stream. Unfortunately, Navik got booted out right as the game started, but it was Carl Ultra Cow for Kinesis College taking it two to z two stocks to zero over DLS from Niagara University, meaning he won the set uh, with a two stock and a two stock, earning six total points for his team. So it is currently Kinesis College up six to Niagara University zero as we move into set two between Flapjack and AMPC. Yeah, and this is, I'm trying, no, yes, AMPC was the Nest player. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have a Luca, I think he also plays Lucas though. Maybe. I think this is a Nest Lucas player, if I remember right. correctly. Versus a Crom. This Flapjack. is interesting. So AMPC lost his set, but they did take it to game three last week, mm -hmm. and that was playing against Jeans Lucas, because we got the Ness versus Lucas oh, yeah. uh, matchup, because... <laughs> AMPC uh, pressed that down a little bit. Ooh, okay, a, li a, little bit, a little bit of disrespect, but you know what you can't disrespect? PK fire on Ness. You definitely can't. You also can't respect anything from Kong. That character is kind of disgusting. I mean, you know what? Yes, he he hits hard now, even it out. I, 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 again, this is. I feel like there's been so many matchups where spacing is obviously spacing is always important, but on obviously on certain characters it's highlighted so much more. And I think this is another one of those matchups. Sorties in general is really important on spacing. I don't know. I feel like Krom is almost like. What was that taunt just in his face? I feel like Krom is almost an honorary not sortie in a way, him and Roy. Like, they play so different from all the other sorties. It's more of like a rushdown character who happens to have disjointed hitbox than he is yeah. a sortie, you know? But having disjointed hitbox still is. It makes yeah, the yeah. Uh, positioning column still like, super Oh, why did he not go for the counter? Hey, interesting. It's. Did they count that in is... the right read there? I mean, he didn't go far enough oh, for anyway. Sure. Not. But he didn't go if far enough. Counter, oh, I guess if he ran in and countered, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. That, that was yeah. definitely an option select. Going for the PK, <laughs> chasing him down. Yeah, Krom, a character not known for being good at edge guarding, considering the fact that if he ever goes off stage, he kind of just dies. But in this matchup, it's so free to edge guard PK Thunder when you have a counter. You just go counter right in front of the edge, and that's like yeah. every time. So yeah. I'm really hoping that Rhett, Flapjack, is able to get uh, AMPC off stage and just get that free edge guard. Uh, yeah, it's no, really I, I, big matchup. It's, this, this is the one matchup. And this goes for any any character that has a counter up against Ness, right? And Lucas, mm -hmm. to be yeah. fair. Is you, you can just get them off the stage and down B. You, mm -hmm. you, you just counter her. And it's, yeah, it's uh, such a strong move that, like, Ness is guaranteed that to get hit by the counter. Yeah, it's so. a super efficient option select. <laughs> oh, good parry, but he doesn't get anything out of it. No, could have committed maybe to getting a PK fire out of it, but possibly didn't even expect to get that parry. I, I don't think many people do it online, to be fair. You hope for it, but when you get it, it's yeah. like... <gasps> you kind of panic, and you're like, what am I doing? <laughs> Was he dead? Oh. Okay, all right. Try and I doesn't really go for the grab there. A lot of rolling coming out. Okay, rolling into the forward air. Second forward air connects. I mean, at the moment, Flap, uh, he is in a, a good spot. Oh yeah, full stock up. Full, full stock up now. And two stocks at the moment, Flapjack, mm -hmm. right here. Putting in some work. AMPC looking to find an option. Okay, gets a good knockup going. Okay. Again, a, a... It's interesting, right? Because I think you're 100 correct when it comes to like the PK, uh, the PK Frost and things. Is if in Lucas's case and in Ness, uh, Ness's as well. Obviously, they're different moves, but they they act very very similarly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I think it is correct, right? If you have stage where you can just kind of let that roll the whole way, then it it it's scary for zoning and spacing. But man, does it feel bad against Crom where he can just rush you down if you make a single mistake with it. Oh, is he dead? Yeah. Oh no. Unfortunately, poorly lined up uh, PK Thunder will mean that Flapjack takes it two stocks to zero in game one. Yeah, Kinesis oh, College here building up a solid lead. Eight, mm -hmm. eight points overall so far. Yep. 
eight points, definitely nothing to sneeze at. Um, very comebackable, but you'd love to be the team up eight points so far. Uh, potentially more. You're probably expecting Flapjack to net, net some more points for you going forward. And if uh, if Kanisha's College can keep Niagara University completely off the board for two sets, it's a really dominant position to be in. Yeah, no, keeping your opposition in this format off for of two sets really puts the pressure on them. But I guess that, that, that goes for any best of five anyway, right? If you go down two, oh, yeah. like, mm -hmm. it's still possible for them if they win all three and reverse sweep it. It just starts looking really difficult. Yeah. It looks even more difficult if all of those games go to th uh, game three, where their opposition mm -hmm. has managed to get one to three points. Yeah. Uh, in this matchup, I really don't know what Ness can do. It feels like a really rough matchup. Like, you want to set up projectiles and kind of. Do you switch wall to Lucas? I think Lucas is probably better. Lucas just has a better, like, footsies game to play. He has those better, like, little neutral tools to keep Krom out. I don't think it's that big of an improvement, but it should definitely help. Um, the Zare, especially, really helps to combat the little sword that Krom has. You can kind of break the disjoints a little bit with that little disjoint of your own. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. We are mm -hmm. seeing... A little bit of time coming out from Niagara here as they are getting in, and there's not going to be any character yep. switches. Yeah. I would mostly like to see more edge guards on the Krom exploiting that bad recovery. But the thing about Krom is it's so terrifying to edge guard him because if he clips you with the uppie, you're both going down. Taking like, Krom to final destination. That doesn't sound possible. That sounds like a bad idea. Uh, or or awesome. maybe it's a great idea because now you have so much more room to PK fire. You too. It's a lot harder to weave around the projectiles, but at the same time, it's a lot harder to weave around Krom's fat sword. So. I, I think I think any any map is a catch twenty two when you play when you're playing a zoning character against a rushdown character. But when the rushdown character kills you at seventeen percent, you're suddenly oh, feeling no. the heat. That was a juiced F smash. Wow, that's a really commanding position to take for Flapjack here in in game two. Yeah, he was at 17% when he got that first stock, and he's already up to 60%. Yeah, that's his back and kill percent. <laughs> and, 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 and this, and this oh, is, oh my goodness, is that going to be that? If, is, if he, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's stock two. And, and this is what we were saying, right, is like taking him to final destination is such a, a catch-22 situation, because if you can get set up and start zoning, then it's great. But if the rushdown character starts rushing you down, then you're There's getting rushed down, like don't have anywhere to hide but and, and that's what i was saying is that every map feels like a catch 22 okay oh. though the straight up here might actually be the downfall frame piece oh uh, yeah he can't, he can't he can't recover that that's that's game set match that's going to be another was... five points for canacious <laughs> as we see flapjack take the set mm -hmm. taking Thir canacious college up to 13. zero that is a tremendous lead if you're canacious college and if you're niagara at the moment you are you are thinking we need to we need to start winning back hard we need to reverse sweep this yeah 13 to 0 is a really bad position to be in not even getting any like redemption stocks losing two one in sets they're just so hard down it's looking incredibly rough for niagara university but they do have potential to have some sweepers coming in at the end. Uh, Flubber, Mr. Paytonator, and Crust all could potentially make the comeback happen, but it is a really big hill to have to look to start climbing now. Yeah, no, that is incredibly... Like, I don't... Because Diaz was the only one out of Niagara that won last week, right? And they're playing against a different team at the moment, mm -hmm. and we saw some close games. We saw AMPC take it to game three last week but we just saw him get not three stocked but he get two stocked and then three stocked yeah uh, so flubber mr painter and crust crust being their team leader and i believe kc is the team leader for canacious so mm -hmm. game three is going to be two players then game four we're gonna have canacious college's team captain and then game five we'll have crust to his niagara university's team captain so uh -huh. Team, we're not going to have another battle of the team captains. Neither of uh, only one of them deciding to anchor way at the back. 
Yeah, a different, a little bit of a different dynamic than what we saw before. Uh, I don't know how much better the captains are than the rest of the team. As you said last time, it was DLS, not the captain, Crust, who got the victory last time for Niagara University. So we'll have to see how this ends up playing out. Going into match three, uh, both players just picking side selection, uh, playing heads or tails, figure out who gets to ban first. We'll be getting into this match pretty quickly. I said side selection because I'm a league player. I guess it's just force of habit. Oh my god. <laughs> force of habit really comes in. But yeah, we will be jumping to a quick break as we get these players set up. And we'll be back with you very, very soon. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, after this short break, we're going to be getting right into Riot Rose versus Flubber. Riot Rose representing Canisius University, Flubber representing Niagara University. Uh, Shulk versus Link. An interesting pseudo sortie matchup here. Yeah, uh, and it, it's it's a yeah sortie matchup is the right way, right? And Andrew's Canisius, uh, uh, yeah, Andrew's Canisius College. Oh, Canisius College is Andrew. Wow, my yeah. brain. I was like, that isn't right. Oh my goodness, no. I thought we all already saw an SD there. Link managing to recover. And this is not the biggest stage for these two characters. It is not, no. It's a pretty close proximity stage. But, uh, once you factor in the swords, I think there's not a whole lot of not hitbox space left if both characters are swinging. Yeah, especially the disjoints coming out from Shulk. And is this our second Shulk player? <laughs> It is our second short player, yeah. Uh, we also saw Nick was a short player from last match. Yeah. Nick from Siena College, of course, who played against Jazzy G and uh, got two Odo, I believe, two stocks apiece. Yeah, and while I was looking away to see who played short last match, we saw Andrew Riot Rose lose a stock here. Um, yeah. Riot Rose here. Yeah, oh. Okay, okay. The power of the Monado is with Riot Rose at the moment. Good grab. Does he commit to the edge guard? No, playing it safe here. Using he that really speed though to yeah. get. Oh my god, he commits to it as well. I don't care what people say. Speed is the scariest Monado. Speed's terrifying. I if, hate if, it. If a player has good reads with speed, you're not out speeding it. Imagine Sonic with a sword. Why? <laughs> that, Why is that, that's, that's what Shulk Why is, is when he has game? speed. It is. It's terrifying. I hate it. And wow, this game is really even all of a sudden. It yeah, this a is. a huge lead for Flubber, but now Riot Rose has really brought it completely back. Yeah, Riot Rose getting a good read. Jumping off there, Flubber now having the stage control. The dash attack coming out, managing to find that stop. Now, once again, Flubber with the lead. Does have that bomb, looking for the bomb tech. Doesn't quite find it. Gonna use to try and space out with the arrows, give him the boomerang, and then start to get it. Good grab coming out. Doesn't get that follow up. And now they're trying to get it. The parry coming out gets punished by a jab, though. Yeah, and a lot of extra credit being built up already. Uh, Riot Rose putting himself in shield mod arrow, kind of sticking himself in a place to take even more percent here. He's really gonna need to take this stock very soon. It's gonna start looking incredibly bad for him. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, right, and with, it's, 
Speed once again coming out here from Riot Rose. Looking to try and get to that. A good patience there. Didn't jump straight in to that up smash, which obviously Flubber was the predicting. Air. The forward air coming out there, finding the stock. But you're at 102%, right? You've got to play in shield this whole time, like for as long as you, because that's, that's going to be game. That's gonna be the first point coming out from Niagara. This is this is what they need. This this is this is the comeback for them. Was that a one stock or two stock? That was a one stock. That was a right, very yeah. close game. Yeah, one stock on the board for Niagara University. Flubber finally getting them there, but it is 13 to 1. It's still a really steep hill to climb as the players go to pick and ban for game two. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. Where does where does Shulk take Link? Probably PS2. You think PS2? Yeah. I mean, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to like? Do you want to go to a small stage? Like Link hits hard. Link does hit hard, but do you, do you want to give Link? Do you want to go for a small stage and force Link into the swordy play, or do you want to go into a large stage where he can zone a bit more? You've got speed monado. You're fine. You'll be okay, okay. but you don't. You don't always have speed monado. Eh, you'll be fine. I am fine. We we split the difference. We go to town and city. We're going to Kalos. Kalos is fine. I like Kalos. I, I, Kalos we've been over this. We're, we're we are aware. You New Englanders <laughs> do love Kalos. <laughs> uh, I really like the Kalos pick for Shulk because of the side walls. The the inner stage side walls. Side. Yeah. What's he doing with sidewalls? It did just for recovery. It's really nice. How how do they help Shulk? <laughs> you know, right, well, you're you're a hundred percent correct. And great, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I I don't know. Mm -hmm. I yeah, it's uh three eleven in the morning is what we're going with. <laughs> And oh. I really, really like this side, this stage pick. Either way, for Shulk, I think the edge oh, no, platforms are good. Great. Yeah, let's get some think, good ladder combos. I think it's like Final Destination, but with bigger blast zones. And I think both those things are good for Shulk in the matchup. So I actually kind of like this pick better than Pokemon Stadium. I think that uh, Flap or Riot Rose, sorry, is sort of the smarter player on this one in, the, in terms of this matchup. I actually really like this pick one. It does mean that these boomerangs are going to be able to cover a lot of space, but Shulk has so many mobility options to weave around them that he should be fine. Yeah, I'm out. I mean, at the moment. Oh, okay, the Ooh, what RB, just the raw RB coming out though. Good read though. Really, really worked out for him. Starting to get the lid, the shield Monado coming out. You don't have much time on shield anymore. Like, you really have to make use of it and kind of take advantage. Yeah. I don't really like using burning the shield Monado. It's such a low percent there. Like, I guess you're technically in kill percent. I mean, you're in kill percent. Just like that. But I feel like you want to save it when you're a little higher. Go for something a little more offensive. Like, you have to play to win. You can't be playing to not lose, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a good percent. But... Good build up here. Come good on. grab. Right, here comes jump. Just, just, just to make those... You know, just, just to make the edge guards a lot safer, because his second jump is still buffed up by jump. Yeah, and there's the back air, evening it right back up, 13%. One hit separates the players. Maybe not one jab, one solid hit separates the players. <laughs> yeah, this this game is incredibly close. As I say that, though, we do see, like, oh, yeah. a massive 80% right lead. Right in the plus Monado, he gets comboed. Yeah, 80% lead for Flubber at the moment. Uh, it's that's, that's pretty big. He's in kill percent again. A good up, like a good up smash, which he's definitely fishing for. It looks like he's going to attempt it. The good grab coming out there, building up some damage. But all this a dash attack at this point. We call Shulk. Maybe maybe not with shield, but uh, oh, but but a definitely huge will buster. buster combo is going to bring back a lot of the percent difference. All right, good. Yeah, jump. Jump's going to be able to save him here. All right, doesn't fall for... Oh, okay, tries to bait out the up smash, try and get him in to that three-frame combo. I actually like it. I actually like this use of Shield Monado a lot. That was almost like a checkmate Shield Monado. Like, it just gives you such a good opportunity to walk in the lane space and even up this percent. 
yeah, and I mean, it's it's working out, right? We saw the 80% lead, now it's only a 20% difference. He commits with the smash, the forward air there, is going to be able to find that stock, and now we see Riot Rose taking the lead. He still could be killed by literally anything, but any hits he gets in at the moment is good. The cross-ups are really, really working out for him at the moment, as he's getting some really good punishes. Using speed there to completely turn up his momentum and try and throw Flubber off. Really, really paid out. He is going to be able to DI this as well. I mean, at the moment, this is working out really well. That shield was really, really preemptive, and it, I think it was the right play to make because if Flubber went for the up smash, I don't think it would have killed even at 150 in shield. Yeah. Now, shield's so powerful. All right. Flubber is able to even up the stock count, but down 70%. I really don't think uh, Riot Rose should have gone in to bust the Milado there. It's so risky when you have such a good percent lead already. But one hit and smash Milado right now will kill. He's running out. He's got one move left. Oh, he doesn't find it. And Flubber is evening it up, but it's, he's still down. Damn it, moment. A fair? One fair does it. Shulk's oh, drop down fair to edge guard is so powerful. It, it literally covers to the blast zone. Like, it's actually insane. Yeah, and the amount of footsies coming out from both these players at the moment, right? They're really trying to step up their neutral game because oh, yeah, they, so I, I think time. they know that they are very evenly matched as well, right? Mm -hmm. they, they've kind of, they're trying to read each other out. They're trying to get these fake outs. And they're Could trying to, it, this, this is literally just a match of reads, right? And at the moment, there it is. Riot Rose manages to Oof. take it to game three. Pretty good. Really big win for Riot Rose to get there. Uh, not forfeiting that extra three points over to Niagara University, forcing the game three to happen is really crucial for Canisius College in terms of just being able to completely shut Niagara University out and guarantee themselves a win here. Yeah. As we get everything set up for game three, we're going to take a quick little break. And we'll be right back. All right, welcome back from that short little break, everybody. We're going to be getting into game three of the set between Riot Rose and Flubber. No character swaps, and we're going to be heading into Pokemon Stadium 2 for this final game. Both players having taken one of the games thus far, with only one stock remaining. This has been an incredibly close set between the two players. Yeah, it's it's definitely been close, right? And I think I think they're really starting to try and suss each other out and go for these big brain reads. They're not trying to go for anything overly fancy. They're going for these short and a hit and run play style where they're just trying to bait them out, get the read. Like that was a really good shield block into the grab there. Managed to get the punish jumping or jumping into jump is what I was about to say there. <laughs> But switching into that Jumpinado, immediately going to speed hit and trying to catch him out, catches him on the recovery roll. And this is, a speed is so good against Link. Like, I know it's good in general, oh, but it's so dead. good against Link. And that's going to be the stock found 83% on what Riot Rose. Flubber at the moment, 
not being put in the best position. No, that was a really, really good up smash. It's going to re lower the game open for uh, Riot Rose, giving him such a great opportunity to start working on extra credit. But Flubber, keeping that extra credit down to a minimum so far, but he really needs to find the stock soon, or it's going to get harder and harder for him. Yeah, it's... Right now, going for the sand slash come out. Oh. Oh, all right, and just manages to not get hit by that down smash. I actually really like going into Buster there. You're just trying to build extra credit, and your percent no longer matters, so it's almost like the Monado doesn't have a downside. No, I think I think that's reasonable. Uh, that is the other thing to mention, right, is that the Monados do, do have downsides. Mm -hmm. uh, shield like obviously that. slowing you. It never mind. Kill anyway. Ooh. Oh, okay, Great. well. Downsides be damned. Yeah. I mean, when you're at this high of a percent, just, just stay in Buster the whole time, right? Yeah, I think right. He's already at 62. That's a really good extra credit. And Making every speed. stock counts. He might die here. Is he He's just going to commit to this? Is that, that's just it, isn't it? There's no way. Yeah, that's a three stock. That's a three stock? From oh Briar Rose. That's going to take Canadian's college up to 19 points. Yeah. 19 to 1. They are. This is... Putting in work. This is a bigger lead than we saw last time. Last time it was 19 to 4. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is now impossible for Niagara University to win. Uh, the maximum they could get is 16 points in these last two games. That would only make it 19 to 17. So with that, Canisius College has locked in the victory in the match. Yeah, I mean, that, that was really, really well played by Riot Rose. Mm -hmm. I I think I think that was a bit of a download complete situation. Oh, for sure, that was so clean. So yeah, that, that yeah that worked out really really well. All right, Rose. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start getting things set up between Canisius College's KCC and Niagara University's Mister Paytonator. Uh we are going to play out the last two game sets just because uh stop count and game count do matter in the long run. So we'll be right back after another small break with those final two sets. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are here to bring you Canisius College's KC versus Niagara University's Mr. Paytonator uh, in game four 
of this five game series between Canisius College and Niagara University. And this should be a good matchup. I believe Casey is a Pikachu main. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could be wrong on that, but I believe that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's it like is. Pikachu versus Rob. An okay. interesting matchup. Pikachu versus Rob on Pokemon Stadium 2. So we're in Pikachu's mm -hmm. home turf, if you will. If we, if you will, yeah. Yeah. I definitely think Rob likes this stage, but uh, you, you gotta go to your own stadium, you know? You know, I, I mean, Rob took Pikachu to his own stadium. Yeah. So, so Rob, Rob definitely feeling comfortable in that situation. But yeah, this is Casey, who is Canisius College's team captain. Playing against Mr. Paytonator. Uh, Mr. Paytonator losing against Lil Taze last, uh, or two weeks ago, in the, the first uh, set of matches we played for this Invitational. And oh my goodness, already, I mean, I'm excited. We haven't seen a Pikachu we've played yet, and I'm not we gonna lie, Pikachu is one of my all time favorite Smash characters. I, I think there's so many cool little things about this character that not everybody knows that. It just, just makes him so interesting and so fun to watch. Yeah, and P in Smash 4, I actually played Pikachu. A really unfortunate air dodge from Mr. Paytonator. He will take the first stock, but even without that air dodge, Casey has been playing really clean, providing a lot of relentless pressure onto Mr. Paytonator so far. Yeah, Pikachu, a character that has this really weird playstyle where you can't call it rushdown, despite it always kind of being aggressive and in your face, if that makes like it's a more like measured aggression than a rushdown, but you definitely can't call it defensive by any means. Yeah, I mean it's interesting. It's it's working out for Casey big time, right? Oh, it's working like... really well for Casey big time. <laughs> Here. Stock lead. The laser from Rob's really, really good as well. I don't, I don't think anybody underestimates it. Oh, that also very good move. That's a bit, yeah. It's... Oh, I can't believe Thunder lasted so long that Mr. Painter air dodged through it and still hit him. And that deep forward air, something we see e Sam and any Pikachu doing all the time, is going to take the stock. And so far, a three stock to one lead for KC with no sign of slowing down. I mean, oh, alright, good parry good coming parry. out from KC. And oh my spiky. goodness, is that gonna kill? Oh my goodness! <laughs> alright, the spike into the hitbox, and the stage spike will do it. I'm sorry, I was wrong. I, yeah, I mean, you know, I can't believe you didn't predict that. I'm gonna be honest with yeah. you. And that is what? a three stock for current Canisius College. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to start it. That's a, that's a good way for your, your captain's debut. Yeah, if you would like a fun little factoid, last week when St. Peter's University played against Niagara University, the final stock count was 22 to 10. The current stock count is 22 to 1. And there are potentially three to five more games to be played. So we will see how this develops for Canisius College. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a... That's a it that's a ridiculous lead. You know what I said earlier, where we we wouldn't really need to worry unless Canisius got a ridiculous stock lead. Yeah, they got a ridiculous stock lead. As a matter of fact, Canisius so far have got a ridiculous stock lead. Uh, yeah, and uh, that that might work out to them because they might just jump second seed. Yeah, uh, Saint Peter's University has a total thirty eight stocks taken, and I haven't done the math. But I think Canisius College could beat that right now. I, I and think... Canisius College hasn't. This is their first match. Saint yeah. Peter's has played two matches. Yes. Uh, they could so... get three, five more here, and they get eight more in the next one. So that's thirteen. They could not beat it, but they could go to twenty-five, which would put them one stock under. Now that's assuming every game is a three stock from here on out, which is potentially a little optimistic but in the optimal timeline for canisius college they could actually take second place overall stocks with only one game with only one match which is absolutely crazy and we're going to kalos good stage oh. i like kalos fun fact 
<laughs> yeah, we're just going to say that every time. And, and then I reply, yeah, you New Englanders really like yeah. Kalos. Yeah, we do. We have Light. Light really likes Kalos. It's yeah, just, yeah. It's and if Light didn't, scripted. and if it's Light scripted. didn't pick Kalos, then yeah, he's uh, an alien. Yeah, then he's an alien. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we are seeing the character switch off of Rob to Crom. A switch I'm probably pretty happy with. Pikachu doesn't have the best time getting him past swords, and it really did look like the Rob just could not find any way to get in on Pikachu. However. You know what, KC Khan is saying, really KC's going, you know what, you, you, you don't think Pikachu can get in on Chrom? I'm about to prove you wrong. Oh, Pikachu uh, can definitely get in on Chrom, just, it's a little harder than Rob, a little bit, maybe. Okay, okay. Oh, well, I mean, we are seeing a good effort though coming out from the Chrom there, good spacing, getting the punishes here. Is he going to look for the cross up? No, he's just going to go for the raw, okay. Interesting choice. The unfortunate end of the matchup is that Pikachu is probably one of, if not the best edge guarder in the game. And Krom is one of, if not the most edge guardable characters in the game. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Again, uh, yeah, this is that situation that is going to be set up and Pikachu's going to fight that. There comes the downbeat. Oh, and that's that's what we're talking about. Krom couldn't go any further to the left because he would have got hit by yeah, lightning and knocked away further. Off. Yeah. And that's that's just how this matchup goes. It's yeah, yeah, as Krom, you're allowed to be off stage three times. Dude, Pikachu <laughs> just... That tail whip really came in strong. Super effective. <laughs> I mean, that one, it's literally impossible. Yeah, close. Get close. Good, good. Yeah. Neutral air coming out. Yeah, both players just playing, playing for spacing here. Pikachu gonna be able to recover. Pikachu yeah. can recover like four times. Um, and there's the back throw, and position. now here's the edge guard. On the oh, prom. that's so disgusting. Oh, Krom manages to get it though. Edge. Really, really, really fortunate for the Krom player there, not getting completely punished, but attempt number but two. He goes back coming out for KC. There. Oh, okay. And, and what's coming out? Yeah, that is going. It's just such a dark. brutal matchup to be off stage. In. You literally can only be off stage twice. If you're off stage more than that, you just lose. Yeah. Uh, and there's, there's, there's number one, and, and there's the connection, there and there's the spike. God, <sighs> Pikachu is a really good character. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's game, set, and match. That is oh my God. another five points, taking us up to 27 to 1 for Canisius College. Really, really dominant match so far. Really impressive showing from Canisius College. Uh... Up next, we have the final game, which is going to be between Soysaurus and Crust. Crust being Niagara University's captain. And we'll see if Soysaurus is able to pull them into second place for overall stock count. Yeah, I'm in. And we will once again be hopping to a quick break as we switch our players over. So we'll be back with you momentarily.
Welcome back, everybody. We're bringing you set five of the match between Canisius College and Niagara University. We have uh, Soy Soros playing Joker, representing Canisius College, and Crossed on Robin, representing Niagara University. Joker, really good character. Robin, less good of a character, but still a lot of potential. I think a lot of people kind of sleep on Robin. Is Joker a good character or is Arsene a good character? Both. I think Joker without Arsene is a top 10 character. Well, we'll agree to disagree on that one. I think right. he might be 11. But Arsene, however, is the best character in the game. Yeah, um, that's, I, the, no one, no one questions that. <laughs> you know, it's when when he when he rips that mask mask off, shows his true rebellious self. He uh, he, he, he jumps ten he jumps ten character spots, and it really works out to him. Yeah. However, Robin. Is uh, is putting. He's got a solid lead right now. Robin's Cross putting that. Putting in work. You know what? Robin's Robin's top zero. Top zero, best character in the game, Robin. Yeah. All right. Underestimate. I slept would. on. Slept on. Yeah. Very. Slept I think. On. I think if Robin couldn't couldn't run out of spells, like oh, have that recharge yeah, effect, of course. Yeah, of it, course. Robin would be ridiculous, right? Like Robin's yeah, kit I... is super duper good. Yeah, and if Joker always had our send, he'd also be insane. Right? I mean, I, I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess that's a valid argument. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, really like the uh, the the upbe there to mm -hmm. punish the such a low character. Our send coming out now, of course, that changes a few things about Joker. Having yeah, a two our send for stock is really good. Yeah, two our oh. send in the stock doesn't have two hundred percent is really high for mm -hmm. Joker. I, yeah, Joker's a pretty light character, relatively. You, you feel pretty good about getting to 200% before getting killed. Of course, you got killed by the end of the day, but like, 200%, that, that might be a record. Yeah, maybe. Some solid action credits starting to be built for Crust here. 46%, definitely nothing to laugh at. 60% uh, Arsene coming out once again. Yeah. Are we going to see the opportunity? There, there it is. Getting back into it. Oh, that thing does so much. Doesn't that do like just fifteen percent? Yeah, it does seventeen when that sends combo, out. What a combo! It really hurts. All right, you know what's better than doing seventeen percent with a projectile? Killing your opponent with a down throw up air. Or, or yeah, down I mean, up air. yeah, it's it's almost like it's almost like they're both good characters. Yeah, if Robin just gets to have the best parts of his kid at all times, he'd be a great character. Yeah, Unfortunately, well. he only gets them about half the time. Yeah, uh, well. But that Crush has been making it work really well so far. A full stock ahead, even including percent. So I really, really like what Crust is doing here. They're managing their spell usage really, really well because they're getting, they're using it right. There's Arcfire, right? Now Arcfire's gone on to cooldown, right? Now, don't need to worry about that because your sword's here, you've got lightning, and your air is still at half, right? By yeah. the time, about now, fire's back. There you go. And that's, it's it's really, really good management, but you at the same you time, right now. So much damage. yeah, at the same time, we are the starting to see now. Soysaurus really, really start bringing it in, getting that Arsene, you know, top tier character, as we've said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the big scary red man really helping bring it back, but still a solid 60% lead for Crust means he's still definitely favored to take the last stock first. Yeah, yeah Crust is, they they really, really are in a good spot. I, I don't know if I like that up here. I, 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 don't I think see what he was going for. I don't but... think Arsene coming out, okay, doesn't hit that counter. Now gonna try oh, and edge guard it with fire. fire, that works out really, really Ooh, well. Hitbox. Yeah, it does have a weird hitbox. Uh, it will hit you slightly below edge. And now we uh, just need Crust to wait out this Arsene, and then I think he's got it mostly on lock. As long as no, like, Arsene jank can really happen. As long as no Arsene jank can happen. But the thing is, Arsene jank can happen, even if Arsene's got two can. seconds all right, left. All right. Crust is, uh, he's back in the clear. There's probably not going to be another Arsene. You say that, but... Oh, oh, that was a really good back air. Back air. And that's, that's going to be the... Second Putting point. another stock, yeah. The Niagara. second stock for Niagara, Crust gets. Yeah, I mean, you're lowering that point differential. Yeah, you are. A little bit. He doubled their score, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah. 
27 to 2 for Canisius College as we start getting ready to go into game two. Lila and Town and City are the two bands for Crust. We're going to have to see what Joker, what Soisaurus picks for game two. I've said it before, I'm a big fan of Joker going to Smashville if you're really technical. However, I don't think Soisaurus has been technical enough for that to be a solid pick here. Uh, there's a lot of really cool up air drag down combos you can do on the platform. He has a really powerful loop you can get around 40 to 50% out of. But we haven't seen any drag down shenanigans from Soisaurus so far. So I think you might want to go to just sort of a safer stage like Town and City, like Kalos. Uh, but he does opt to go for Yoshi's melee, wanting to go for those quick kills, get some solid ladder combos in for himself, uh, and we'll see how it works out. Definitely a small stage doesn't allow Robin to set up projectiles like the side Bs and the neutral Bs, so I definitely see where the pick's coming from. I think it's a pretty solid pick. Yeah, I I, I like the pick of is but i i do agree with you i i think mkleo would uh would also definitely agree with you <laughs> and i think well it's one of those things right where joker is such a technical character that mm -hmm. some people think that he won't work on a stage and then somebody who's super duper technical on him will just be yeah. like oh yeah you can do silly things you can do really silly things on joker Three. Joker's crazy, but, but the stage could be. does have some ladder combos potentially opened up to him. You can get like up air, up air strings. Uh, so I definitely see why the pick could work out very well for Series But uh, This could be the last game of the evening. It could. But it doesn't look like it so far as Soisaurus starts out with the early lead here on his counter pick. And that's the thing, Soisaurus. I, I this is the first time we're seeing Yoshi's melee, and I, I think it say, is. Yeah, I just want to say I love this stage. I think it's so cute. It's such a charming it's stage. Good yeah. It's oh, okay. It's, okay. Well, yeah. It's got it's got a lot of it's got a lot of what New England players like. Uh, it's got, yeah, it's got walls. walls on the yeah. platform. Uh huh. And that uh, that's what you take. That's all it takes to be a good New England stage. See, our best player plays Fox, so whatever he says is the Bible, and he says Walt is good, so... Alright, well... <laughs> but anyway, uh, Arsene getting a little bit of value here so far, about half the meter left. If he can find the kill, it'll be huge. Yeah, I mean, he might be able and to there it is. What is that hitbox? Uh, that is Arsene. I can't believe that killed him. Best character in the game. <laughs> yeah, you're very correct. Seconded by Hero. <laughs> I don't know. That might be a little less. Fun. I don't know about that one. Um, when when Salem wins a major playing Hero, you can come back to me. Okay, okay. Uh, give me a, give him a week. He's he's studying. He's got to beat Levin first. So. Yikes. <laughs> Hundred and four percent uh, though. Definitely in kill percentage here. All crust. Yeah, that Levin sword very strong. Yeah, all Crust needs to go is hit a back air, and that is actually going to kill at 104. 116, even more so. Or 116, 116. Yeah. Even more so. But it's almost 4 o'clock in the morning. That, Leave me alone. Even despite that, really solid extra credit being built up for Soisaurus here. 60%. A solid lead. Ooh, nice ball jump. There it is. But there's the back air. But you have to be happy with Soisaurus going into the second stock, 60% up. Basically half a stock up. I mean, a bit more than half a stock. If he managed to get this connect here, there you go. Now kill percentage. Oh, oh no! Rolling into what? the charged he forward even, smash. He didn't even roll. He jump air dodged into it. That's, is that the orb of confusion? Like, how do you go into that? Oh, oh, smash? oh. I like it. I like what I'm seeing. Oh. Another one? Can we get another one? What, the oh, no. Ars Ars sends out. Best character in the game. Best character in the game. Robins and kill percent. I really, I don't want to, I don't want to be the one to say it. Robins and kill percent. I mean, yeah, our sends out. If Robin is in kill percent. Robin's at kill percent and zero percent. It's just how it is. Oh, oh my goodness. Joker's also in kill percent too. Was it, was that, that was fifty-five percent. 
That was such a good confirm. Oh my god. Was, was that 55% to kill? I think so. Uh, Rob, Rob yeah. is the best character in the game. Best, yeah. Half the time it works every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Could, could this be the massive comeback from Cross? It would definitely be a really big comeback here. But there's another R set out. He's got to make it through this if he wants to win. Good shield, good shield, looks for the punish, good shield damage coming out the parry. He's playing so aggressive into this first end, he's not even just waited out. And it might just bite him. Or, or, or it might be exactly what they need is, oh, okay, the lightning comes out, does connect, makes it more safe for that recovery. Oh, on. the back throw, this could be it, Arsene's gone. All we need to see is one good hit from either one of these teams and we could be at the last game hit. This this could be it. If it's so close. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm actually on the edge of my seat. Alright, the shield damage. Good. Good shield lag coming out. Oh, Looking for the grab. Doesn't make it. The back dash though just gets enough distance. Reads the dash forward. Okay. Okay, this could be okay. This could oh, be huge. Confirm. Oh no, the confirm off. isn't made. And we're just waiting out time at the moment for Spose to recharge. Okay, the sword is back. Just needs to get one good back here. That's what we're looking for. The grab could be it, though, if the follow-up is made. We the patience. Wait out time for spells. Oh, it's going to go over there. there. Is. There is the up tilt. That's going to be it. And that is going to be... The up B. Yeah, and that's that's going to be taking us to game number three. Either mm -hmm. way, which, either way this goes, that was unbelievably close. <laughs> that was... Really, really close. The counter pick, I guess, paying off. Those small blast zones, definitely. Uh, we did see him lose the stock at 50, but he was able to get the win in the end. So the counter pick did work in his favor. And we are going to go to game three. Uh... Oof. Ah, I yeah. mean, that... look, I'm after... as soon as this game finishes, I'm going to bed. I'm going to be laying there yeah. for like an hour, like adrenaline <laughs> for both of those players after that game. Oh my fiance my sure. is like going to be passed out and I'm just going to be like, I can't sleep. Oh yeah, I can't imagine she's having a great time with uh, this being your job right now. But, uh... Uh, well, you know. Oh yeah, well, that's life. I built her a new bed today. She can't really complain. <laughs> that's, that's really fair. Yeah, she's really not in a position to complain then. All right, it looks like we are going to be running it back to Battlefield for our final game here. Another triplat. This is Crust counterpick, remember? Crust opting to go back into a triplat. Not the same stage he lost on, but a very similar stage. So I guess Crust thinking it's more the blast zones that were the problem than the actual stage layout itself. Yeah, which I guess that, that's a reasonable... I think that's a reasonable... Oh, yeah, uh, I forgot. Crust actually can't go back to Battlefield. Um, he a... won on game one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, that, that's why I was not realizing. The players, smarter than we are, actually realized, called each other out on it. Uh, and it looks like we're going to be going to Smashville instead. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Whoa, Joker's best stage, Smashville. I don't know. <laughs> no, I uh, I think it's actually a pretty good counter pick here. Um, the top platform, when you're not hitting those loops, can make it really awkward to get follow up strings. Uh, so I could see it working out really well for Robin. That roof above your head makes the downward gun that Joker has, which is normally one of his best tools, it makes it almost impossible to punish his landings. Uh, it makes it a lot worse. So I can definitely see why this counter pick would be solid here for crust uh, you and know, it's a switch off joker and until until everything that you just said is completely invalidated yep. mm -hmm. when that's the best we see after, actually a uh, yeah i mean that, that's usually an how it goes and then they change things but soysaurus opting to take the main man donkey kong donkey kong to the smash leader of the bunch. That is the truth, if you know his name. Oh. <laughs> DK. Donkey Kong. Ah, -E ah, -E ah. That is exactly. And at the moment, Donkey Kong is hitting so hard. You know what? I, I, I This is the best way for the night to end. There is nothing better than... <laughs> the 4 o'clock delirium. Like, oh, I love him. 
And this game starting out really close, only 20% between the players. Uh, even getting even closer. Which is actually a massive lead for Robin. Because I feel like DK has the same thing as Bowser. Where like, he's so heavy and hits so hard that if you are able to just get a few hits in and gain a lead on him early as a lighter, like a, you know, a lighter class, it's, yeah. it's good. Yeah, in one way it's good to, it's really important to have to get the lead early because you're gonna have to work for like 50 more percent each stock. But at the same time, it's almost like it's even when you're up percent. Yeah, because so, you can get hit more, but that is gonna find the stock day. Okay, all right, that was, you know what? That killed slightly earlier than I expected it to. I don't know why, That's since sword, Robin is hard. in range as well. Yeah, like Cr Crust is also in rage. And uh, that's, I think that's something that is uh, not considered always when it comes to the Smash. Is, yeah, Rage, uh, a lot weaker in this game, but definitely it, still It better. still factors in though. It's it's not yeah. Smash 4 Rage. No, stop. God, <laughs> That's some flashbacks. Uh, Bayonetta and really Rage. Really solid easy extra credit lead here. Don't forget, Robin uh, crunched a full stock ahead. So... This is 98% is huge, 112% now. Soy Story is looking a little lost on this DK pick, just not able to get in at all. No, and that'll Crust be another stock. Put in the work. Crust looking like he's going to be able to find redemption for his team, not lose it in a straight 5 0, keep it 1 4. I mean, all, all we need to see is one good hit from Soysaurus, right? And we Robin's really like, gonzo. There, there's yeah. no way Robin's hitting a solid hit. Even a dash attack, a dash attack would kill Robin at this point. It, oh yeah, it definitely would. 165. I don't even know if he has a juice sneak attack. He barely does. But that, oh, that, that okay, yeah. okay. I was going to say. All right, it's looking, it's comebackable, but it's not. We do not want to be in Soysaurus' position here. He's down a lot of ground. Yeah, I mean, i out now. Okay. I'm back and forth. All right, good shield blocks. Good punish. Really good punish because that's going to win them the game. And that's Cross earning two more points for Steam once again, doubling his score, actually tripling it. He gets two points for winning. Bringing the final total 28 to 26. 28 actually being the largest point points won in a single game of the four matches we've played. Interestingly yeah. enough. Canisius College in third place in total points now. Uh after having only played their one game. Yeah, no, they jump up to the third in the bracket. And I mean that was that was a good game. I I had a really good time. I don't know. I I hope everybody watching also had a good time. Uh, earlier in the day, we did of course see Siena College beating St Peter's, and uh, we've just watched uh, Canisius College defeat Niagara Esports is or Niagara University, and uh, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in to the EGF Collegiate. Founders Invitational, and I want to personally thank all of the schools for partaking as well. It's always a pleasure casting you all. Uh, do you have any closing words, Gerbil? Not really. Just congratulations to the two winning teams, to uh, to Siena College and to Canisius College for taking their victories here. Yeah, and we will see you guys tomorrow when we will be playing Founders Rocket League. So I hope you're all looking forward to that. And I have been Kevin Navic Dignan, and you can find me on Twitter at NavicCasts. And I have been Toxic Gerbil, and you can find me on Twitter at Toxic underscore Gerbil. And as always, you can follow us for all of the updates and announcements at OfficialEGF on Twitter and Twitch. And we will see you tomorrow.